Yagi Kadan, Yagi Kadan, Kurte Yayan at Lakaya Hat Atki, Kurte Yana Sahoi Hayukatangi, Kurte Yana Sahoi Hakusi, Wasa Hatu Yaka Yagi, Uskana Hutu Dadi Yak Chakaki Yahoe, Ak Kwan has to on a cock, Gulf Cheese to Katakanian, Uskitan. Ya ha khunki yan kine di khayakhte tan aku aya hasani awel utu tin ya hakani yan aya yan ye di ha khunki yan iski tan chat ya singet de kina Suits run. Kusahan Katusha Antenaya Kuhi Yayaki. Chakia Yehayati, Gunner Cheesh, Gunner Cheesh away, Yohan. It's a wonderful day to get our land back. to hear our languages, to see our culture coming back into our hands. Today I'm thinking of all of those who work so hard to make sure this dream could come true, including ancestors who were beaten for who they were, who were shamed for who they were. I think of Shikshani Marge Dudson who said, they tried to beat it out of me. They tried to shame it out of me. They tried to scare it out of me. But I'm still here speaking my language. I feel so united today. I think we should write grand entrance on everything we do. <laughs> Birthday parties, whatever. Gonna cheese to the Ak Kwan for letting us be on your land and do this work. It's a wonderful thing to see these totem poles come to life, these masks come to life. Uh, a couple of process announcements. If any elders who are with us, if you're getting cold or you need a snack or a drink, there is a room right there that's been prepared for you. At this time, ha ni kokaya, yewe wutusukuch an kwa hatuwasuku, 
Yan hasawis nei, we on quake, yer kreka ka. Gunil chish away hachi yis. Ha kach aya, kuyil lagao. Ya tu shitzin tin. So we'd like on this land of ours for our veterans to post the colors, to post the flags. We thank you for your service. We thank you for your courage. Yeet koaha. Please clear a path in the center for them.
I'm playing gonna teach you, Han. TCLL, gonna teach you a Hayat ki has to eat it too. Kana khawe wa yan wat, khuat se tu, shku ni ye jne. Ta kana khawe se kuzi. Ya ayak, ye has ka kwasi aj khawe ke dene wa has to eat it too. Gonna teach. I'm so thankful for the TCLL program. They're going to do one more song, and then we'll invite folks who are up front to uh, find a spot. We also want to make sure that our relatives who are Haida know that they are welcome on these lands. Our relatives who are Simshan, you are welcome on these lands. It's so good to see your faces. Okay, if anybody needs a restroom, they are in the Sea Alaska Corporation building lobby. We do request. Yeet ho ha, you go ayah one.
Yak echawe yohan Sagutin kone yak wahi Was Tesla sa yanak utsi koa Kajin win it satu dayakoa kan kakitu katangi Jan koa kakaktu ak ya yaki Kan cheese Wasahatu yake yake ti yif the kat yohan Kefeka de hasak wa kaak ya ya ki. Ya khuna kuu u. Hasu ya ki hasu tu au saku un. Yiji yis hasa wa tlaykhi. It i khua hasu ji ke u ti hati has wa kuku. Gun chish khua hatu wa saku ya u tu saqai hasu i de. Gun chish yuhan. I'm so thankful we could be here. On a day we will never forget, the children from Kuna, they also wanted to perform, but they could not make it here, unfortunately, so we want to recognize them. It's a monumental day. And we're going to try and do something that's very difficult for us, to have a five-minute limit on our speeches. You go I one. The audience will thank you. We're going to change. Well, I guess that includes me. I better hurry up. OK. <laughs> I can't, I can barely even imagine how different this very place was 10 years ago. The most memorable sort of component was it was a good parking lot in the evening when I came to the movies. This was not here. This was not here. We did have this, the Sea Alaska Corporation building. But now the, the bold moves of Sea Alaska Heritage Institute Sea Alaska Corporation, Central Council of Clinkett and Haida, Gold Belt Heritage Foundation, Gold Belt Incorporated, Douglas Indian Association. We're just going to buy it all back. It looks a little better than gold brush uh, facades, if you ask me. And someone who deserves a tremendous amount of recognition for stepping forward, for finding the funding, for having the courage to say, hey, change this, change that. Do something for our future generations and for our ancestors. She's going to welcome you here today. She's created so many opportunities for those of us who can speak our languages, who have learned them. She has endured a lot to continue to acquire things for our people, to construct them, to leave them here for future generations. Rosita World. Goodness cheese, goodness cheese, Dr. Hune. Are we not proud of this young man? Are we not proud? <laughs> Dr. Hune Lance Twitchell. <laughs> oh. 
Are we not proud of those children that we saw dancing before us? I wanted you to see our future. Those children who are speaking our culture, speaking our language, who are dancing on our land, they are going to assure us that we are going to be here for another 17,000 years. Such pride we can take in our future and in our children. Gunalchi Shaniat Kusani, most noble people of the land, the Clinket, the Haidas, the Simpsians, the Yupik, our Yupik, most honorable Yupik woman there. <laughs> Lutic brothers and sisters, our Athabascans, and those, and those people who have come to our land and love our land as much as we do. We are happy you are here too. Trinos <laughs> Trish for being with us today as we celebrate the first phase of Kutiya Dei and the faces of Alaska. Gunnachish Akwan for your graciousness and your support in allowing us to place our clan and our tribal totem poles on your land. Gunnachish. Gunnachish to the multiple and generous donors who made this day possible including the Mellon Foundation, the City and Borough of Juneau, Sea Alaska, and Rasmussen Foundation. I'd like to pay special recognition to the Rasmussen Foundation for its great work throughout the state in promoting healthier communities and citizens. May we also welcome Gretchen Guest, the new CEO of Rasmussen. And thank you, thank you to the board of directors, including Kathy Rasmussen, Marilyn Morano, and Curtis, Curtis McQueen. Curtis, Curtis, one of our own there. Gunnachish. And also for the staff who are here with us. I also want to pay special recognition to our late Congressman, Don Young, who made the appropriation to the Denali Commission possible to support the carving of a pool. We miss our friend Don Young. <laughs> Good enough cheese to the clans and tribes whose crests and masks are represented here, and to the master artists who created these iconic works that will stand among the greatest art collections of the world. We also want to pay special thanks to Dawson Company for their extraordinary work in getting the poles erected despite the volcanic that ash that delayed the shipment of necessary supplies. I know we were disappointed that we could not raise the poles in our traditional ways that shows the unity of our people working together to raise our poles. That was not possible because of the narrow, narrow coastal area where the poles erected. But Dawson stepped up and did a great job. And so I want to thank them for all of the work they did. And also, I have to acknowledge Capital Copy. Capital Copy did a great work. They worked round the clock to get those posters up uh, uh, so that we could see them. I'd also like to pay special tribute to the Honorable, Honorable Mary Peltola. Yes. <laughs> We love our Mary. We are doing a baby raven book called 
Mary goes to Congress. <laughs> to Senator Murkowski staffers, to our state legislators, our city assembly, members of the delegates to the Central Council of Clinkett and Haida Indians of Alaska Assembly. Stand up, stand up delegates, I wanna see you. I am so glad you are here with us today. Thank you, thank you delegates. And also to our A and B and ANS Grand Presidents, Heather Gurko and Daphne Alby, Thank you all for being here today. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge our traditional clan and tribal leaders, the Alaska directors, and our SHI Board of Trustees, our Council of Traditional Scholars, and our Artist and Language Committees. Without their direction and support today, this day would not have been possible. So we owe them great thanks. Our unsung heroes that I would like to recognize are the staff of SHI. They bring their expertise and passion to our work. They have made SHI what it is today. If they would please stand, if, and if you would join me in thanking the SHI staff. Our totem poles depict the epic history of tribes and clans and their spiritual relationships to our land and to our ancestors. The faces of Alaska depict the rich diversity of Alaska's indigenous populations. Indeed, we are making Juneau the Northwest Coast Arts Capital of the world. <laughs> Our collective presence here today and those who have joined us virtually reflect the unity that we as a state and a peoples have. We are showing the nation and the world that we can come together in harmony despite our ethnic and our political differences. Thank you for celebrating with us today as we show the world the rich heritage of our indigenous societies and the greatness of the state of Alaska. I could not be more proud of our culture and people than I am today. We are the direct descendants of our ancestors who have lived on our land for more than 17,000 years. You are my inspiration. Good enough cheese. I claim good enough cheese. Good enough cheese, Shweek Kahani. I'm so honored to be sometimes mistaken for this next speaker. I had a 45 minute conversation with someone, and then he started asking me about Joe Nelson's children. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm not Joe. <laughs> and I texted my wife, I was like, he doesn't know who I am. And she says, tell him, tell him, don't be mean. Talk about language stuff, so. <laughs> Joe Nelson has made incredible contributions to our people, including helping me get a job at the University of Alaska Southeast. I'm so thankful for that. The one thing I'll share is one time I was trying to strategize with Joe. I said, we got to do a whole bunch of stuff. This racist person is going to be in charge of something next year. And he said, oh, no, no, we just run him over. <laughs> said, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. So I'm so thankful to be able to do work with Joe, to be able to get to know him 
to our children, our friends. They, they're both going to TCLL. Well, all our kids are. Joe Nelson. I, as I usually do, throw my prepared remarks out the window to just assess the moment. Uh, and, and Dr. Uh, Twitchell, Kune, uh, I, we all love and appreciate Dr. Twitchell. He is the game changer. Uh, he's uh, following on the heels of Dr. Kahani, Dr. Whirl, who's been a game changer. Uh, and it's all about our children. But for every time that he gets uh, confused for somebody thinking uh, it's, it's me, I get that 10 times a day. And that really puts me in an awkward spot. So I just say, uh-huh. <laughs> or, or sometimes, yachayati. Yachayati. Because uh, when, when, everybody gets to know, gunachish. But yachayati is what you grow up, you know, responding. So you want to respond to something else there. Um, so I need to up my game uh, and, and jump in with Dr. Twitchell a little more so I can keep the conversation going more than three minutes is about what I can do. What I, um, and the thing I'm going to beg for today is, is uh, all of your good hearts, all of your good intentions, because uh, if we were doing this back in our traditional times, this would be a multiple day event. And we're going to extend our best to each other with kindness and love, uh, understanding that these totem poles have been in the works for the last, yes, probably six months. But what's behind them has been in the works for the last 17,000 years. And it's all rooted in this place, and we are still here. All of, my, all of my directors, I'm just one of a bunch of directors. They're all here. Lots of love to all of our directors. Um, and, and I do have to share very briefly just more of the background. These corporations, these 12 corporations and these hundreds of village corporations, they were created over 50 years ago, as you know. Um, and, and everything we do is much more deeply rooted than that. Uh, these corporations hold title to the land. But we know that's all of our clans that actually hold the real title to all of the land. So the biggest message is Gunuth Chish to the local, the Ak Kwan, the Taku Kwan, the Wushkitan, the Lin Yedi, and all the local uh, Kwans and clans for being these hosts. We also have 60 legislators. They're probably all here in the room. They're still doing the work up the hill. Uh, and, and they're here for another, hopefully, just not another forever. Uh, they need to fix this budget and get us back onto our summer doing. So thank you to all the legislators for being here. And thank you to the local Kwans for hosting uh, all of our, being the capital city. But the quick, real quick story is 50 years ago, these entities were created. Yes, they were created to make a money, but they were also created to make a difference. And for us in 1980, the board of directors at that time, as all of you know, you should know, the board of directors convened. They convened with the elders, and the elders at the time left behind a pretty simple or pretty clear but a powerful message. Our hands are growing weary, was the message that came out of the meeting with the elders and the Sea Alaska board back in 1980. And the board responded by creating Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation at that time and Sea Alaska Found Heritage Foundation, as you can tell, really leads Sea Alaska. So some might think of it as the tail wagging the dog, but no, really, they're the ones that are making the impact that's going to ripple for generations. And if the Sea Alaska Board had nothing left to do uh, or, or was running into to issues, um, some view it as a cost center. But every board member I've ever dealt with over the years they all agree that that is our most important investment, the little contribution we do to Sea Alaska Heritage every year because of what happens here in the, uh, the community. Uh, that ripples all around the country now because we have shareholders all around the country, shareholders in all 50 states. 
uh, and, and now businesses all around the world. Um, my time is up. I, I'm going to yield. I did not wear the regalia, the, the crests. I'm just representing the company today, so that means I'm representing all of you. I, I, I am a brown bear, but I did kind of tone it down a bit because just to acknowledge um, that we are clan people uh, um, and we're, our clans are still here. And those are the stories and we're only partially done with, these to with the totem trail. And we know all of our villages are doing the same. These poles came from our villages and just showed up here in the last few days. So good cheese to all of you coming here to witness this today. Uh, this is what makes it powerful is you being here with us today. So let's have a lot of fun uh, and, and really hug your kids, hug your elders. Uh, and, and let's enjoy the day. Good night, Sheesh. Sheesh. If you ever get confused, Joe has the better hair. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> We're so thankful for everyone who's provided direction to our Angsta corporations and to our tribes, uh, all the previous presidents, all the chairs, uh, for everything that you have done to, and to have a vision that it's more than just cutting a check for your people. It's about taking something and using it to continue to get everything back. So I'm so honored to introduce our next speaker who has taken the Sea Alaska Corporation in a wonderful direction. Uh, it's such an honor to do work with, with this person and to see the things that, that he could bring to Sea Alaska as it for the first time, I think, makes direct contributions to languages, to language programs, to language learners, and sees something beyond trying to increase the dividends, which is important for our people. Our people are in need. But to see a longer vision. It's been wonderful to see the work of Anthony Malat. the Alaska Heritage Institute. Gunakchish, click it and hide the president, delegates, and executive council. You being here with us makes this day special. I see people from the entire state, from the North Slope to the Southwest to the interior. Our friends from Haida Gwaii, I can see every single one of our communities here today. It makes me feel good. I want to give a big Gunakchish to the Askwani, the tree people, all of the totems you will see came from your land, from Sea Alaska land. We're celebrating the carvers today, but I want to highlight all the apprentices that worked with our master carvers. Apprentices, where are you? The master apprenticeship relationship is our culture. It's what's created our 10,000 plus year line of language, arts, tradition. Thank you, master carvers, for bringing your apprentices under your wings, teaching them your knowledge. Anybody who carries our knowledge forward, our weavers, our language speakers, our singers, our dancers, our uncles who take their nephew fishing and hunting, our aunties who take their nieces berry picking, keeping our people on our lands, keeping us whole in our relationship with our land. Gunak Chish. Gunak Chish. The carvers and the apprentices, 
are celebrated today, but everybody, all of you, are celebrated for moving our culture forward. Gunak Chish, how a Doxit Newsom. Atlan Gunak Chish, Yake Hawe, Yake. The largest tribe in Alaska is Quinkin Haida. Quinkin Haida was formed out of the interests of trying to make sure we can hold on to our land, born out of the Alaska Native Brotherhood, the Alaska Native Sisterhood. At this time, we'd like to invite Chashi Ish, Richard Peterson, President of Clinton Haida, to come and give welcoming remarks. First, I want to thank both Joe and Anthony. Because of them, I can speak longer. They gave me a lot of time. <laughs> uh, Richard Peterson, it's an incredible honor to be here. And I'm, I always uh, I take privileges as my role to get to say what I want. Of course, I want to recognize Dr. Rosita Worrell, she said that we were going to be recognized here, that this, our land was going to show who was here. And I want to thank the Akwan, the neighboring Takukwan, and all of the leaders who assist and support this work that allow this representation to be developed here. This is a big deal. I grew up in the village of Kassan, surrounded by totem poles, representation, knowing who we are. And I moved to Juno, and while we have so many of us here walking around in this community, I didn't feel represented. I didn't feel connected. I felt uh, actually quite often I could see the prejudice. And I see that changing. And I see it changing in a good way. And when we show who we are in our best way, through our totem poles, through our art, through hearing our languages, that's a big deal. And so with taking some privilege, I want to I want to turn to my brother Hune. I want to recognize this man. <clears throat> Hune is my personal hero in a lot of ways. All of us come from places of trauma, historic trauma, and he, he transfers all of that into his love for his people, into the love for the language. Every day he navigates that. So many of our language warriors do. So I, I single him out because he's my friend, my hero, but I know there's many of you making the same courageous sacrifices. And I guarantee you, if you're a language warrior, your family is making those sacrifices. They're holding you up. I know Hune would not be where he is today if he didn't have his family supporting him. I want to publicly say, we hold you up, we support you, we love you. Because when I hear him speak and our language is coming out, when I see these little ones dance out, it gives me hope. It gives me great hope. I want to say Hawa to Hune. I want to recognize our A and B and A and S. Uh, they're here. They're still here. They are the parents of Clinkett and Haida. I want to recognize them, our delegates. I'll also recognize our state leaders, our legislators. And for those of you who support things like land acknowledgement, I want to say thank you and welcome. I appreciate you being here. I look out and I see our Haida relatives and our friends, and I want to say ha'a for being here. It means so much that you're here and that you're a part of this. To our Simsian friends and relatives, and going some new some, Davey's going to help me on that. <clears throat> but it means so much to see, look out and see all of you here. And I want to tell you something that uh, I, I appreciated the acknowledgement and that Central Council 
is working to do land back. We're buying our land back. What was illegally and unlawfully taken, we're legally and lawfully buying back. And when Rosita shepherded the Sobolov building's construction and, and brought that to life, she raised the bar. To me, representation matters. To look and see us reflected in the buildings, in the totem poles, that's priceless. Central Council accepts the challenge and the bar that she's raised, and when we develop, we're also going to work, and we're going to also try to mirror some of the work that she's done in that we want our people to know this is their home, that when they come to Central Council, we are proud of who we are. It's reflected not just in our work, in our deeds, it's reflected out for the world to see because it's changing things. To walk here in this artist campus, I, I watch people, I, I, I come through here sometimes myself at night, no longer to park and go to the movies, but to come and, and celebrate. And I see so many people with their families, our people, taking pictures of themselves with our totem poles. Isn't that an amazing thing? It's an incredible thing. So for all of those who contribute to this, to support these movements, I say, Ethelene, I'm going to cheese. How uh, we can do like some news some to you. I want to also just say it's a thrill, an uh, absolute thrill to sit here and to hear our young ones dance out. I want to thank our clan leaders and our elders who encourage them, who lift them up. I want to thank our dear friend and our sister, Mary Patola, for coming home and bringing her arm candy with her because he's from here, he's Clinkit. <laughs> I can say that Buzzy said he liked that title. <laughs> Anyhow, I can go on and on, but I'm just so full of happiness and, and thankfulness, love to see all of you here. Our carvers, our carvers, we cannot celebrate you enough. What you're doing matters. Representation matters. Our languages are so vital and important, but we should never overlook our culture is all encompassing. It's our way of life. It's the foods we eat. It's our art. It's the language. It's been a very matter of being and coming together. So again, I'm just joyous today. And again, Atlang Gunakchish, Jahaa, and Doik Sonusom. Enjoy the day. Love each other. Thank you. Gunakchish, Atlang Gunakchish, Hawa. Is. Andrea Cadiente Lighty here from the Douglas Indian Association. Oh, would like to invite you up now to speak. The Douglas Indian Association is the federally recognized tribe that has been on these lands. Would like to invite them up to speak. Good exchange for this impromptu uh, invitation to speak. Uh, my husband and I didn't expect it, and he more appropriately should have been called instead of me. I am the tribal administrator for Douglas Indian Association. However, um, my husband is uh, of the Taku Kwan, he's grandchild of the Ak Kwan. He's grandson, great great grandson of Chief Anath Lahash of the Taku Kwan and Chief Kau E of the Ak Kwan, and he's our president of the Douglas Indian Association. So I yield to our president. Good day. 
like my wife said, we weren't, ex this is a shock to be up here. But as she said, we are people of the Taku River and the Douglas Indian Association. And like Rich Richard Peterson and Clink and Haida, we are buying our land back too. We are going a step further. We are going a step farther. The Douglas Indian Association has invested in a 42-foot gillnet boat, and we're trying to rebuild our fishery on the Taku River, and we hope for your support. Welcome to our land. Thank you. Good exchange. Um, I'd also like to rep uh, recognize our tribal council. We have a nine-member tribal council. I haven't seen all of them here yet because there are so many uh, wonderful leaders, tribal leaders, matriarchs, aunties, uncles. And if we do have tribal uh, Douglas Indian Association tribal members and Douglas Indian Association tribal council, please, please join us in being recognized and stand. It says uh, Frank Cornell, he's of the Yan Ye Di, one of the principal clans of the Taku. He works with us at the Douglas Indian Association. Paul Marks, who is our language, fluent language speaker and mentor to numerous apprentices, along with Fred White. And it's been, it's been a very passionate journey and often painful. We've uh, come a long ways, as our president said, and we're working very hard at marine sciences programs, restoring the fisheries industry. So I'm glad he did say that. He is actually um, the last in this, from this area on the, the U.S. side of uh, our Yanye D. Taku Kwan fishermen. And he's trained our grandson, Philip Kadianti Blattner, Kadianti Lighty Blattner, who's fished with him for 15 years. He's uh, been fishing with him since he was five years old. Actually blessed our vessel with uh, a lot of tribal dust as my husband lifted it on, lifted him on to the stern of the boat when it was still dry docked. And he ran around with great joy and we knew that he'd be joining him on the river and fishing with him. I watched him in the tribal assembly the other day and was quite proud that he's become pretty comfortable at the microphone. <laughs> but I know we all were given three minutes, although it was unanticipated by us. So, Gunnik for recognizing the Douglas Indian Association, whose membership primarily consists of the Akwan and the Taku Kwan as our base role members, our original members. We love all of you with all our hearts. Most of us here were born and raised in Juneau of the Douglas Indian Association. So we remember what was here even well before the Sea Alaska parking lot. And uh, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet because we who walked these lands and tide lands when we were just children, and to see us now, you know, obviously with I'm ego. I told my husband this morning that I just realized that I can relate to the eagle with the white top. <laughs> and, and, and that made it, that made this white hair more meaningful to me and in looking out today and looking for a place in the elders or the senior citizen tax exempt group anyway to, to sit with you. Some of us are reluctant to recognize elder status because with that comes honor, pride, dignity and um, having earned your stripes and leading the way. Go next, Sheesh. Chief claim. If representation matters as it does, 
then how about being the first Alaska Native member of the United States Congress? <laughs> kind of a big deal. I think our philosophy should be, hey, we got one of these seats, let's never give it up. It was an honor to speak for you, to campaign for you, to, to let people know that this is what should happen. And as a gift for your representation and what you're doing for our people, I'd like to uh, share the word with you, which would be my arm candy. So that's how you'd say it in Tlingit. So we had to bring out a new word here for this event. It was so important. to be here, I just have to compose myself. Usually these tears swell up when the introduction song comes. Walter Sobolov Jr. always laughs at me because the minute the dancers start coming in, it's you know always the oldest one and the youngest one. And it makes me bawl like a baby. <laughs> because all those you know decades where we were not supposed to be proud, we were not supposed to be here. We were not supposed to know our language and our names and our cultures and our clans. And all that classified information persisted. It was underground for a while, but it is here and now it is loud and proud. Before I go too far, I want to recognize my husband, Gene Peltola Jr. He's, he's here with me today. He's the son of Pamela C. Pam C. Many of you might know Pam C. She's the third daughter, the fourth child of Mabel, Mabel Wilson Pike and Benjamin C. Um, Mabel Pike was born on Douglas Island. She's Raven. She's um, from the Whale House of, of Kluckwan. And Benjamin C. is from Excursion Inlet and Huna. So, um, he, my husband really is from here. <laughs> and of course, I've got two beautiful Clinket kids who uh, are Kwashkikwan, as I am. And um, it's such an honor. They spent a few years going to TCLL and um, had the benefit of sitting in the audience um, with David Katzig telling them over and over, you are precious, you belong here. You are precious, you belong here. You are precious, you belong here. And that they internalize that, and that is such an important message. And that's what these totem poles are saying to us. You are precious you belong here. That's a message from our ancestors that has come directly to us, directly to our hearts, directly from them. You are precious, you belong here. Um, I could go on and on and on, but I wanna cede my time to um, other leaders. Um, so as they say in Congress, um, I, I'll yield my time back. Wiana Chaknachpak. Oyana, Grichish. At this time, we'd like to invite the deputy mayor of Juneau. I might need some help with, we're gonna have to give you a Tlingit name or learn how to pronounce your last name. I do apologize. Maria Gladyshevsky. And Rory Watts, who I think is 
retiring, is that correct? So we want to thank you for all of your work and give the city of Juno a moment to, uh, to speak. Cheesh. Cheesh, I appreciate that you couldn't pronounce my name. I'm going to try to pronounce some of your words. So if I, if I uh, mess up, please forgive me. Gunukchish um, for the invitation, and thank you for inviting uh, Mayor Weldon to be part of this ceremony. She's super sad not to be here, uh, but I'm lucky that uh, she delegated that privilege to me. So um, I'm honored to be part of this historic event and uh, represent the mayor and the entire Juno Assembly. As you know, we're here today to in Heritage Square to s dedicate the first 12 uh, of SHI's Kutea Dei, yeah, uh, lining our waterfront. These poles have been carved throughout Southeast Alaska, and the city and borough of Juneau is privileged to be part of this monumental project. There are many parts to be played uh, in a project such as this, bringing thus such a project to life. Um, none of us on the assembly can carve a totem pole or cast a bronze mask. Um, but we ha can play a small part uh, with our votes of support that enabled city staff to work with SHI on this project. Um, CBJ's Parks and Recreation, Docks and Harbors, and the Administration Department have been working together with SHI for many months um, trying to determine where best to site the first poles that will make up Kutea Dei. And of course, SHI and CBJ share the goal of making Juno the Northwest Coast Arts Capital of the World. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we are, we are very pleased to see the beginning of Kutea Dei and look forward to its completion when a grand total of 30 poles will grace our waterfront. Um, President Peter uh, spoke of this and so did Representative Poltola and about the change on the waterfront as the results of, of these polls. And I've certainly been watching with excitement and pride as these really stunning polls have been raised on our waterfront. Um, and SHI's Ricardo Worrell was quoted in the paper as saying, quote, it's shifting the feel of downtown Juneau to something more authentic, and it's a symbol of a new era for our community. And um, I couldn't agree more with that sentiment. The, the, the polls have already brought new life and inspiration to the waterfront, and we are so grateful. You can already feel the difference uh, as you walk along the waterfront. So we're honored that the city and borough of Juneau has been able to participate in today's ceremony and dedication, and we look forward to working with SHI for many years to come. And finally, um, on behalf of the Juno Assembly, I want to thank and acknowledge some of the many hands who have played a part in Kutea Dei. The ancestors, the visionaries who uh, envisioned that this could happen, um, the planners, grant writers, funders, administrators, master carvers, apprentices, engineers, installers, organizers, as well as the family and friends who fed and supported all of them as they worked on this project. That's all of you. Gunukchish, hawa. In 2018, during our bronze post dedication ceremony, we asked then Mayor Ken Kolch that the intersection between Seward and Front Streets be designated Heritage Square. Today, we are proposing to change the name of the street in between the Walter Soboloff Building and the Sea Alaska Plaza from Seward Street to Heritage Way. <laughs> The city recommends that we have a community meeting to discuss the proposed change. I would say that our citizens here today constitute a community meeting. The re 
reasons for changing the street names are to make the street name compatible with the Northwest Coast Arts people, the Heritage Square, the Walter Soboloff Building, the Arts Campus, the new SHI Fab Lab that will work to incorporate indigenous and Western science, and furthering Juno, the Northwest Coast Arts Capital of the World. So therefore, therefore, I would move and ask unanimous consent that we change the name of the street in between the Walter Sobolop building and the Sea Alaska Plaza from Seward Street to Heritage Way. All those in favor say, ah. <laughs> I would say that motion passed. <laughs> I would now like to present the deputy mayor the street name application. <laughs> we understand that Rory Watt will soon be retiring. We have been very fortunate in establishing a great working relationship with the city. We want to thank him for all the work that he has done to support Sea Alaska Heritage Institute. We would wish him well as he starts a new chapter in his life. I also have to share that when we proposed putting up the totem poles, we had thought about 20 totem poles. But when he walked the seafront with Lee Katinger, our CEO, he said, can we have 30 poles? Yeah. Yeah. I said, I think we could do that. <laughs> but then he asked me, he said, we're not going to put up any shame poles, are we? <laughs> and I have to tell you that you see the military outfit that I'm wearing today? This is from Lieutenant, Lieutenant Schwatka. And I don't know if you've seen the Thunderbird totem pole down the street, down by the tram. It has Lieutenant Schwatka. Unfortunately, Lieutenant Schwatka didn't pay our people, Yende Yonk, the money that we thought he should pay him, the money we thought he was worth. And so therefore, we took his name and we changed it to Schwatki, my Schwatka. And we also took his military uniform. But today we are honoring, we are honoring our relationship with the military. We're so proud of our vets. We know that Alaska Natives serve at a higher rate than any other ethnic group. And so Rory, it's not a shameful. We honor our relationship. So thank you, Rory. Thank you for all you do. Uh, I'm so honored to have a, just a few brief moments to, to celebrate this wonderful event on Clinkett land. We're so lucky. We are so lucky to have so many people in Juneau working so hard to make this community as wonderful and loving and accepting. And, and it is just a terrific place to be. Uh, and I, I thank Dr. Worrell for her, her vision. In my really short time as city manager, uh, on a regular basis, uh, Dr. Worrell would have a new great idea. And I would think, oh, I know this is going to be good. And I can't wait to find out what, what it is. And just in, in, in a few short years, uh, look how we've changed from the property across the street that we used to call the hole, and this that used to be a, a parking lot, 
And now we're making a beautiful connection with the waterfront and with beautiful totem poles from all over Southeast Alaska. So thank you, thank you everyone. And what a great and wonderful day to be here on Clinket land. I'll share a very short story. I'm 90% sure it's true. <laughs> so there was someone on a big boat a long time ago, came to a place, and he started asking his people, hey, I should go find out what that place is called over there. So he goes over there and sees that there's indigenous people there. And they start talking. And so they start figuring out he's trying to ask what the place is called. And they might say Sitka which is the name of that little body of water right there. They might say, which is the name of right over there by the little boat dock. They might say, which is the name of this hill right here. They might say, which is the name of the river that flows right over there. But when he came back to his people and they said, hey, what's, what's, what's the name of that place? He said, me. <laughs> so we're coming for you next, Mendenhall and Gastineau. We never asked you to put your name on a place that already has a name. So we're going to have our children speak the names that our ancestors put on these lands. Because the people who came and put their names on it, they don't own it. It belongs to our grandchildren. It's a place reserved for them. I look out among you and I see faces of walking legends who have done incredible things with their hands, changed the world with their minds, maybe had a vision of what things should look like, how we could take things in a new direction. I know one of them said, well, you better draw the old things for about 10,000 hours before you try something new. And I'm so grateful for the work of so many folks who have done so many amazing things, like Dolores Churchill, like Nathan Jackson. Like David Boxley. I'm not supposed to say Davey, David Boxley. And David Boxley Sr., if he's here. I think of the late Terry Rockfar, the late Clarissa Rizal. One of my favorites when I was trying to grow into being an artist was Robert Davidson. Such an honor to see you. We're from the same clan on our Haida side. I was so grateful to, to meet you so many times. Every time I've talked to you, I've been so impressed. And I remember one time he gave an art, artist presentation he said, any questions? I said, yeah, why did you draw this thing upside down? He said, because I wanted to. I was like, well, yeah, you can answer that question any way you want. The world is a better place because of what he has envisioned and what he has done. And if you haven't read the text, Potlatch has pedagogy, I recommend it, to think of how we can transform education, how we can transform the way we teach people. So I'm honored to invite up Robert Davidson. Dr. Rosita Whirl. 
and CH, and see Alaska. The Langas Kill Logan, Dit Holing Koya is us. The Dikurne Kinang, how up? I have a two minute written speech, but I read very slowly. How <laughs> for inviting me to speak at this monumental occasion to celebrate the artists who accepted the challenge to create these totem poles. These totem poles mark this time in our history the strength we are gaining in reclaiming our rightful place in the world. This accomplishment adds to the success of celebration hosted by Sea Alaska, which I know many singers and dancers look forward to, including the Rainbow Creek dancers. There was a time when the art of the Northwest Coast almost went into extinction because of the laws of the colonists in Canada and the US preventing us from practicing our ceremonies, which the art played a big part along with our songs and dances. Our ceremonies went underground <clears throat> for fear of prosecution, hidden under the guise of picnics, weddings, and Christmas dinners. Our communities lay barren of our art, where stood many totem poles lining the fronts of our villages. Our villages and towns were once surrounded by great art. Art was one with our culture. We had art that was sacred, brought, on, brought out only for certain ceremonies. We had art made for trade with the mainland peoples. We also had art on permanent display, validating our place in the world. Art, very much like what is happening today. Art is our visual language. Throughout our history, art helped to keep our spirit alive. Now art is helping us reconnect with our history and ceremonies. In the village of Old Masset on Hadigwai, where I grew up, and Skidigat, there were only a handful of part-time archlight carvers who were a thin thread connecting us to the old masters. The only evidence of a once thriving civilization on Haida Gwaii, and I'm sure in other villages up and down the coast, were through fuzzy photographs in books published by the National Museum in Ottawa and other institutions. We don't have a word for art in our culture, so I will borrow this word from the English language. Art among the Northwest Coast people was our only visual language. We used to document our history, make declarations of territory, define our clans through crests illustrated in the art and used as a trade item. Celebration here in Juneau gives us a moment this celebration gives us a moment in our history to celebrate our songs and dances. The many times I participated at celebration, the feeling in the air was enlightenment. We all left this experience strengthened through our songs and dances. Sea Alaska has added a new dimension with these tonopoles, which is a tribute to our ancestors who created this beautiful art. In 1989, I claimed the culture back as ours. A friend of mine reacted by asking, who gave you permission? I said, I did. Now that we own it, I feel it is our responsibility to maintain and nurture, nurture it. We are in the infancy of the revival of reclaiming our identity and philosophies through the art. This means we have the responsibility to take care and nurture the new growth. I congratulate the carvers in accepting the challenge in creating these beautiful totem poles 
to the best of their ability. I congratulate Sea Alaska for their vision to create these. And I thank Dr. Rosita Whirl for her vision and commitment to make this happen. And thank you very much for this four minutes. <laughs> As we move to our ceremonial rites, I just want to take a moment to think about those who went to residential schools or boarding schools, some who were able to hold on to so much, some who lost more than we can measure, and some who never returned. There's a little school over there that has horror stories about what our people went through. I talked with a Yupik friend and colleague who talked about when he was taken to Wrangell Institute. How his mother would wait for every plane, wondering if her son was coming back. She didn't speak English. She didn't know why he was taken. John <laughs> I'm so grateful for those who endured, for the things that they went through. There's so much work that still needs to be done. So it's an honor to be here to witness a revival, a revolution, as the people take back what is rightfully theirs and what should never have been taken. For those who follow us, we will perform our rites, our ceremonies, and prepare the place for these new totem poles. We kutia, yewa hatu wasagu, wudu tini aya wudu tini, katuwu aya shetai. We want people's spirits to be warmed by the sight of them. Gonna cheese. Yit koha, yit nawu, Josubov, Kakatukshake, Kushka, Ken Grant.
In traditional style, what's happening right now is Ken Grant is the clan leader of the Duck Dainton Raven Clan, and he is being dressed right now in his regalia by members of Eagle Clans, the Tequedi and the Kogwanton Clan. The hat represents the clan, clan Atul of the Duck Dainton. It's a very ancient hat, and he is assisted again by the Eagle clans who are putting it on him. We're, we are very, very honored when we see clan Atul like this brought out. Gunashish. Ha ha. Ha ha. Good cheese. Han. Na shade honey. Ho ho. Jawa ikho khosai yak konana te. Jago yak. Ya. Tatki. Kao tutli atzi. Gunu chish. Ak khani. Daku khani. Ho ho. Jesse <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yatsas Khan Kinakawa has Nakhiai that has half a tin. He said, As our Ach to us a goo, as the GA Ho 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 ho. I am thanking, uh, you know, it's, it's so nice to be able to speak my language. It means so much. And, uh, but I, I begin by thanking the owners of this land, the Akwan Wetaskin and Daku Kwan. We thank them, uh, their ancestors. Uh, their voices are still echoing in the mountains here. They're working on their food. Uh, and I, I thank them that I was able to set foot on their land. And I feel the presence, I feel the presence of uh, 
the ancestors of the owners of this land. And I said, they're, they are amongst us. They're sitting amongst us right now. And I said that my ancestors are standing on top of Mount Fairweather. They're looking down on you. They're hearing your voices. And you made them happy. Yeah, well, I got my grandson standing with me for support here. And I thank him. Yeah. Right now we are making a big celebration for this uh, totem trail. And it's for our grandchildren. And it's for our children to learn about the, what the ancestors went through and to learn about their crests. And they can stand before it and look very proud. Uh, means they'll be standing proud in front of their totems. Uh, Right now, we're elders here. And I said that we're going to hand over the paddle to our young people, to the up and coming leaders. And they will be paddling through life in a changing landscape in their grandfather's canoe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, going to change. Humbly ask the Whiskey Ton for permission to carry on as if we are standing on our own land, Angoon. Cheese Whiskey Ton. Deshitan Yetki, children of the Deshitan. Achish has Dachlawedi, Tlichwahas Tequedi, Tuakan Yun Kogwantan. Achtawas Gugunish Chishe of Sakaye, 
Han yatkı sani. Earlier as I looked into all of your faces, I listened to the raven cry. I've listened to the speeches. And what I heard was a happy cry as I watched a lot of you tears in your eyes made us feel wanted with strength and love. Mary Patola mentioned it wasn't that long ago Arat U was put in a box and put away out of fear. Today, I walk the streets and I can put my head up and say these are the people of Alaska, the ones that were here first, the ones that love this land and will be here from time and memorial. When it's changed for coming to this gathering. We bring out our atu. I dress up my nephews to, to balance the killer whale's headdress and my grandfather's hats that are old. To give strength, we bring out our atu to each and every one of you. want to do a yake at this time. when we shake off all our hurt feelings and we shake it off and we bring in new new feelings we do it at three in the morning normally I want to call on my brother Paul stop getting con. In our culture, we need to have social and spiritual balance. So we had a spirit song by a raven from the Dechitan, and now we will have balance from another song from um, the Tequedi, Dan Brown from the Tequedi Eagle Clan.
the song because we have business to do otherwise. Cheers. still in fear. Let's not forget those before us. A moment of silence. Connie, Achtachan, Paul Marx II, Achide de Che. Kusoaho. Jessica Yadahu. Paul Marx the second. A conico of Jesus, a heat of the she, a cashi
Kuzin, where to Hako? Okay, they'll just he'll just stand with us. Hey,
We're going to balance the whiskey tons, the equity. I need uh, two princess eagles to help us. Eunice. Shkinduton. Skin is a leader in Angoon on the killer whale side. Eunice is a child of the Deshitan Raven House. They're gonna help us. The man that's gonna the man that's gonna perform for us is take your mask off. Is Tuk Deshuhit. He's one of the apprentice carvers. So Angoon is happy that. We have an apprentice carver that's going <clears> to <throat> brighten up Angoon for us and put a smile on all of your face. Stand up, Wink. If the down lands on you, it's good luck. When we, when we fish for a halibut, we set out a skate and, it, and, it, and the buoy bounces back and forth slowly. That's the beginning. As we bring in the, the halibut, it starts to fight. Till it, when, it's, when its face reaches the top, it'll shake and it usually blows out whatever was in it. Just gonna let you have it. As the dancer dances through this, he calls on his grandmother to help him. This is how we're gonna have to do this, to help him through this. And I'm gonna do 13. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> okay, when it
Chris Chase, Chaco the Hit, yeah, well. I think in a cheese way, you hon. Ya, you did ya ask, honey, has to eat a cock to tea. Yeah, we has to ya did too. You got to suck her. Yeah, you got to suck her, good at cheese. Good ha. Ha, Ben Cornell, eat her ha. So now we are going to move into the ceremony where we are going to be thanking the spirit of the trees for giving themselves to us. We believe that everything has a spirit, including the trees. So we are thanking, thanking the spirit of the trees and feeding our ancestors. We're going to pay respects to the tree people for all that they do for us, for our adu, our adu, our spoons that we eat with, our canoes, our houses, and the fires that keep us warm. We're going to pay our respects to the Asquani. Before I start, um, I'd like to inform you about uh, the person that, that I learned this from is David Kadishan. Uh, Mrs. J. C. Johnson, Chukan Shah, Duk Edahaya, Ya Tsayehi, Akadus Hanuch, Wigan, for your information, this is from Mrs. J. C. Johnson. They put seal oil in the fire when they're beckoning. They're beckoning the Asquani to come. They're beckoning the Asquani to come. 
why do they use seal oil? A student asked me, and I didn't think at the time. I said it's tradition. Yes, it is. But you know, I bet you when you go home, you'll eat herring eggs. And, and you'll bring out the seal oil. You'll pour blueberries in your dishes and you'll pour seal oil over it. You'll make mush in the morning and you'll pour seal oil over it. So actually what the, what the seal oil is, we're feeding our ancestors the seal oil. Uh, they, I'm pretty sure they're very grateful for it. And, uh, David Kedshan, he said, when he finished, he said, everything that is breathing now, all the creatures that are around us in the woods, all the birds that fly, all the creatures in the sea, would not be alive if it wasn't for women. If it wasn't for women, do you hear that? And David Katershan, he called the tree people Goa Khan. And all of you know what a Goa Khan is. It's a symbol of peace. So the tree people are Goa Khans. And then he finished with saying, all the women, all the women are Goa Khan. You are peace people. Yeah, well. Yeah, this concludes Gulachish. Let's give a, the women a big hand. <laughs> We've taken monumentous strides here in the last week. Clinton Hyder's um, executive council met. They made great strides for us people. Totem poles are coming up everywhere. Hair and eggs are being fed. And, um, I was telling Lance, I didn't surrender my five, I just balanced a song. So I want to stand up here and thank President Peterson personally for the, pro for the, um, the program for repatriation. This hat I have on my head here is the hat of Shukha Stuk, solid rib cage like a man. These are the children of Shukha Stuk of Kots, the mother bear. And we want to thank Clinton and Haida for standing up for our people throughout the turmoil that they have faced. They've done nothing but a terrific job, and I want to give them a hand because um, I believe 90% of the work is done in AMB and ANS and Clinton and Haida and Sea Alaska and everything else. They're predominantly women. So the women are running the areas now, and that's the way it is. I got, I got a little story about, I'm a retired 302 um, operator, 
I op um, I've been an operating engineer for 45 years. And, um, and the guys um, told me, he goes, women make better operators than men. They make better anything because if you show a woman the right way how to do it the first time, she'll never change it. She'll do it right every time. You do a man, you tell a man how to do something, five minutes down the road, he goes, he don't know what he's talking about, I'll do it my way. <laughs> so that's the thing we got today is um, the women are doing it their way and we have John Strad, I want to thank Rosita for inviting me to talk here um, and th for all of her work. Because without a vision, we don't have a dream. Exactly. And this is our dream. Yeah. Our children are our dream. I work out at Oak Bay Elementary teaching the children out there um, how to sing and dance. And you can tell how hungry they're for it, just like the food that Kenny was talking about. When you burn food in the fire, we're feeding our ancestors, and it makes you hungry. So I want to thank um, the Alaska Board, the Executive Committee, um, and um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm lost on names all the time because I'm going up for a, a medical surgery on Sunday, and we're going to have chemotherapy one more time. So, so if I forget your name, please forgive me. It's just part of my um, my, my my medicine, all way. So, huh? So with that, um, you know, it's like it's like um, when the bears come across something they really like. They allow each other. He's hungry too. Here we are gonna cheese. Thank you guys for everything. Here we are gonna cheese. Yes, to cut your hand. Chin kat kadeh kutia kade aya yuka gatitsa at ya yidat. Ye tu ye ti koa nask when it's gonna cheese to cut you hon. Kunahuit tech hatlaki kade yande ya has a day saya we kutia sahe saya haji in kati. Hayika Nasu, gonna cheese. We're gonna move into the dedication of our 12 totem poles. Keep it in your three minutes to five minutes. <laughs> Never gets old. But as these totem poles look upon our lands, they'll protect us. They'll remind us as well to protect each other to be better protectors of ourselves, to be better protectors of our people. We'll just imitate our ancestors who lived as noble people. Just we don't want anybody to cause harm on our lands. Just live a good life. Okay, I need my uh, my immediate family to come up here to join me. Doc Sam, the clean ladies. Gook.
being 80s, come forward, please. Is there Amber in the house? <laughs> I guess the rest of the family's kind of shy. So uh, I, I think my brother's out there, and I think my cousin's out there. Uh, and I got this young lady with me, too. <laughs> Can we also have our artists, Robert Mills and Larry Jackson, come forward? Are they shy too? Okay, I would, um, I would like to say that everything that has been said for the last couple hours, uh, they said it all. I want to add to it. There has been a lot of changes over the years. And I know the one thing that I have learned from my grandmother, Bessie Fisaya, and my mother, Rosa Miller, it was something that they always drilled, and I've always, uh, since I became the tribal spokesperson for the Yucatan Akwan, I've been sharing all of this many times when I speak with people. I've heard my grandmother Bessie say that things are are going backwards. It's, we, we have to make a change. And this is where I come and say we need to come together. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We see all these beautiful, beautiful totem poles that's out here. I've taken the walk through the walkway out, out on, on the channel here. Beautiful. It covers we got, what, 20, 20 plus more? But that's good, because all of this will bring us together, support each other, love one each other. And right now, I, I just wish that my grandmother was here to speak, because she would be proud. And my mother, Rosa. Bless her heart, she's going to be 97 in July. And she's still with us. My grandmother, Bessie, she stayed with us until she was 97. And she was one powerful little woman. But I, you know, looking at everybody that's here, with the weather is cooperating every once in a while, you feel a little sprinkle, but it's hanging in there. So we're out here speaking, and we're all holding each other up. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Love one another, hold each other up. Speak what you want to speak. You get things done when you work together. 
and you stay away from the negative because all that does is create problems. Work with the positive. We get things done. So I, I'm not going to be as long, long-winded as the others before me. So I will make this short. I want to wish everyone a wonderful future here. And you know what? Everybody, to your left, to your right, shake hands with who's next to you. Gonna cheese, look at that. Gonna cheese, see, we can do it. Hold each other up. Support each other. Love one another. And if you have a voice, open it up. Speak. Have a voice. Someone will listen. So, gonna cheese. Gonna cheese. Ah! Uh, Hello everyone, and thank you all for being here today in this historical uh, occasion. My name's Harriet Miyasato Belio. My grandmother is Annie Worthington Johnson, Akwan from Off Bay. I'm Clinkett in Japanese, and I'm a Clinkett name is Kuskakish. And I have been in dance groups and lived in Anchorage for 50 years and was born in Wrangell, Alaska. My one regret is I don't know my Clinkett language, but in my time of growing up, my grandmother didn't teach us, but she worked very hard at everything. And during my lifetime, I have stayed active in the Clinkett Haida and the ANB and ANS, both in Wrangell, Sitka, and Ketchikan. And I know some of my traditions, but I don't know all of them. But this is, this is we're so lucky and blessed, blessed with what Central Council is doing and taking it forward. And I went to tur on the tour. I couldn't believe that we now own the Driftwood. We own the A and B Hall. We own the uh, offices out there. They have, I went and saw the uh, public safety and everything they had there and the big warehouse they had where they ordered all our things that we got for Christmas and everything. And they, he's really taking Central Council a long way, even during the pandemic. Thank you, Richard Peterson and the staff, and everything you've done. And Ed Thomas was the best leader, too. He was good to all of us. And the ones before, I had the honor of working with Herb Hope for 30 years in Anchorage, and Hilda, my cousin from Cloak. So there's a big, bright future ahead for our children with all that Sea Alaska and Central Council is doing for us. And it is really good to see the children and everyone that they're carrying on the language and learning and everything. Thank you very much. Anyat Kasani, shout an echi. Yake, a hossetine. Zahi, you had to suck. I'm really honored to be here. When I look around and I see all of the 
people who have done so much to restore our culture, it warms my heart. When I look at the change in the community with the things that were done, I'm very appreciative. As I sat here listening to the ceremonies and the presentations, it makes me think about those who came before us. People like Austin Brown, people like Mark Jacobs Jr., people who have done so much. I think about the times when we did not have our culture and our history presented before us in an honorable way. And today we celebrate. We celebrate the good deeds of those who serve us today. Akhtawasagu Gunachish Rosita World. I want to thank you very much for all you do for our people in our cultural way. Gunachish to the board, the uh, board of trustees of the Heritage Institute for all you do to keep our culture before us in an honorable way. I thank Sea Alaska, the president, CEO, and chairman for all you do to provide the resources necessary to carry out the things on behalf of our people. I want to thank the state of Alaska for opening the doors finally for our people. The city and borough of Juneau were changing in an honorable way to welcome our culture in a, in a very profound way. In closing, I want to just say, when I looked at the young people also who danced in and uh, danced and spoke our people's, uh, our, our traditional ways, spoke the language of our ancestors and danced the songs of our ancestors. It really does us good to know that we're making progress. It does us good to look at our young people and smile because not only are they dancing, they do it very expertise, you know, expertly. I was really impressed with how well some of those young dancers danced. And so those of you that are parents of those children, thank you very much for all you do for our people. Gunastish, my Tlingit name is Shaganasta. I come from Gaja Hit Trap House. I'm going to use this opportunity today for a new beginning, a new unity. I'm standing next to Yachtat Kwan, Yachtahit. We are standing together and we support you. The Tlinadi have many houses. I come from the house of Kawai. We call it the log jam house, fish trap house. This staff is a trap stick house. Today we are going to stand next to Yachta Hit. In unity, in coming together, making the Tlin Nadi strong, in unity, 
We are doing this for our outer shell. The Wuskiton, gonna steesh Wuskiton. Together, the Wuskiton and Clin we are Ak Kwan. So gonna steesh Wuskiton. Gonna steesh. Tukanadi, Tukansa, Ganastish Kaguantan, Ganastish Yanyadi of the Taku Kwan. You have heard. Ganastish Shungu Kedi. We stand together as Tlingit people coming together, setting aside hard feelings. Today, I'm proud to stand next to Yachtahit. This is a very, very important time for the Thlin Nadi. And we're going to use this totem pole to come back together. It was the Tekwedi that brought us together. And it will be the Tekwedi that will bring us together again. In closing, you saw the men standing here. My brother, Everett Wright. My brother, Walter Soboloff, Jr. My brother, Todd Wright. We stand here as men, Tlingit men. We are good men. As Tlingit men, we are wrapping our robe around you. We are setting the fish trap out there, using the fish trap as a safety net for our women, for our children, so no harm comes to them. So, Ganeshtish for allowing the Tlin to come together for the first time. So, those are my six minutes. So Ganeshtish, and thank you for allowing us to stand together as one people. Ganeshtish, Ganeshtish. Just a couple of things really quickly. Uh, along with Larry, I have three high school boys that work with me uh, down in Cake every day. And that's Tavin Shilton, Talon Davis, and Kaimani Logis. I just want to thank them for their willingness to work and their eagerness to learn. Uh, second, I just wanted to share uh, what my late grandmother, Lena Skeek, had shared with me in what would be her last the last piece she's seen of mine make. She looked at the photo and she said, grandmother would have been so proud. And that generation knew how to convey much with very little words. And she, even though I could hear the pride in her voice, she was referring to her mother and she was referring to the muted period that her mother had to endure where certainly ceremonies like this didn't exist, much less the art. 
So despite all of the hardship, genocide, and atrocities, today here we are, and your grandparents are so proud. Thank you. Eleven more to go. If I can offer a suggestion, uh, we'll do this with joy, but if I might recommend those clan representatives to talk about the totem pole and the artists. James Jack, Naomi Michelson, Nathan Jackson. Ah, Wishkitan Hago. I do so Wishkitan is to Hago. Looking at all these whiskey tons that are standing with me, I think I can times three for each one of them, so be prepared. Anyat Kusani, a khunke, Kunakak Tuyake, Yat Hoske, Neyake. Children of the land, relatives. So good to see your faces today. Yankuk Ani Awayat Play the Shudatian Hanakahidi Yat. This is Wishkitan land. We had eight tribal houses here in the village area and right here. Kletcha Suhan Yat Hatuhan Hatliko Has Tu Yat Has Hanhain. We do not stand here alone. Our grandfathers are standing here with us. Atlain Gulachish, see Alaska heritage. So, to cut away artists. Atlain Gulachish, ya Kutia Dei Gis. Thank you, see Alaska heritage and the artists for creating this totem pole trail. I think it has to go city, to get city. Our grandfather's footprints are all over this land. Ashkawa hatu ya ka yat has city yaege. For that reason we are happy to be here on our ancestral land. We give thanks to those that had the foresight to make this a reality. We give thanks to the artists that gave their time and dedication to make these beautiful poles that represent all our clans. Not just the Tlingit Nation, the Haida Nation and the Simsian Nation as well. We are grateful to be here today. We are grateful for the leadership that is here. My father's people, the Dakhdain Tan. 
Akani Yan Deshitan to Adusa Nelia City Gunachi Shata in the Yayege. I thank all the Ravens for being here, for they are our father's people. I think of my grandfathers that went on Hashika Has Zikwa Johnny Fawcett. My uncle Gukshanish Gilbert Mills. I think of how proud they would be had they been here today. How proud of the progress that our people have made and how proud of our, the recognition that is being made here of our, of our people. During their time, they were pushed aside. Now with our leadership that we have, that is not allowed to happen nowadays. It has been said that we, buy, we are buying our land back. We all wish that we wouldn't have to. We all wish that we would have had this land forever. In our hearts, we still own this land. In our hearts, each one of you that come from northern part of southeast Alaska to the southern tip, you all feel that you still own your traditional lands, your grandfather's lands. And that is true. That is very true. We own it within our hearts. I look at the regalia here. I see some of our, our, our raven regalia and our eagle regalia. It is so nice that it's brought out here to remind us of who we are and where we came from and to remind us of our ancestors, Hashika'a Hus. How much time I got left? <laughs> 25 more minutes, okay, thank you. We just completed our tribal assembly. We had some great times. Accomplishments were mentioned, things that are happening within our Clinkett and Haida organization. We have a lot to be proud of, and we have a lot to look forward to, and we have great leadership that is providing us a good future. Thank you, President Peterson, for your leadership. I want to thank Rosita for her leadership of the Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation. I want to thank Anthony Malott for his leadership of Sea Alaska. I want to thank the A&B and a &S for their continued advocacy for our people. I play good as sheesh. Thank you to our, our native leadership. Kenny Grant, good achish for your leadership. You're always willing to be there and, and help us and, and uh, giving us an education. Whether we realize it or not, you are educating us with every word. Good achish. Paul Marks, well, that's so. Paul has worked with our young people and is, is learning our, our traditional ways and our language. For that, I am very appreciative. Good achish, Paul Marks. My, our eagle leadership. By, by, by tribal brothers. I cannot say enough about Daniel Brown, his strength, his fortitude. He is going through a rough time that none of us can imagine, yet he does not fail to show up. He does not fail his people that he is the leader of. He shows, here, he shows up here and gives us the honesty that's within his heart. For that, I thank my brother, Dan. Good achish, Dan. We love you very much. Yeah, wah ha, good achish, yah ha, inisiti, yah
Oh, he, he took up my two minutes. <laughs> I'm very grateful to be here. Uh, such a momentous time. Uh, one of the things about carving, I had come to catch can, and a person said to me, Nathan Jackson, the last of the Clinket Carvers. And uh, I was a little upset because I know that there are more Clinket Carvers and there that uh, really can be able to excel in our art. And the only way I could be able to do that was look at items that were in the museums. Now, I see art all over the place. And uh, for, for the most part, I think uh, the assistance I got from uh, Norman, Jeff, Norman? Norman is, has been doing little small poles and he never dreamed he'd ever get to do a big pole or be involved with one. And Norman has been, uh, is, is one for any artist to have a left-hander. If you're a right-hander, you have a left-hander that can be able to do works on the other side. And so he is a good carver. And I noticed one thing. With those little tiny knives that he used to have, now he has ordered big tools. <laughs> <laughs> so he is really great in that. Then we have uh, Kristen Dalton. Kristen Dalton. Oh, you wear your glasses. <laughs> yeah, Kristen Dalton has always been uh, there at the uh, carving shed, probably before I even get there. And so he is so enthusiastic about being on time. And uh, so for uh, uh, Christian, you know, he has been loyal. And that's one of the things that you end up doing as an artist is learning quite a bit about loyalty. And then we have uh, Tim Flannery. And uh, being a small carver, uh, when you're doing things that are kind of low, and he can be able to look down <laughs> on stuff. And so uh, that's one of the things about uh, having these, this crew that were able to do this poll. Now, the eagle was one of the things that they wanted, and one of the things I saw in, in um, Ketchikan was this eagle went down and got this fish but couldn't get it out of the water so he started swimming towards shore and when he got to shore then one of the things that he did was he left out his arms, I mean uh, wings and uh, to dry them out and I thought wow that's pretty good. But here, it's too windy. Uh, I figured if you had wings sticking out, they'd blow off. And so that's what happened with that. And then 
The other thing was having a couple mountains. I asked, what's the deal with mountains? Why did they do the mountain? <laughs> and I realized that they, and uh, Thomas Jack, um, James's brother, younger brother, said, Grandpa, why, why do the people take the meat up to the mountain? Over the years, it was a way to be able to preserve that. And so that's what that representation over there, and of course the shark, the shark is a, a real, uh, I would say a focal point for their people because there was two that were lost, uh, how many, four people, young people that were paddling and as they were paddling, the shark came up and got the canoe and probably got the kids. And it happened again. And then they said, we're going to have to f get this guy. We're going to have to fashion a, so a spear to get the shark. So they got the spear. And they towed two little tiny canoes behind them. And the shark ended up getting those canoes. And there was nobody in it. And they, from what I understand, bow and arrow, there was some guys that were pretty good with that, that were taking on this job of killing that shark. And so, it's a story. It's a story that they've gone through, but that's what the totem pole is all about. It's a story. It's a historical event that takes place. And so, and there were heroes amongst them that were there that, that did the job. And here we have this building and also all these poles that are being done. And certainly want to thank uh, uh, more than just Rosita, but also well. <laughs> Dawson Construction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's good. Is that, is that okay? John Echad, no. Please forgive me. Hatashan Yachsiti. Nathan Jackson, that's how uh, he was uh, asked to do the totem pole because he is the grandchild of the Wishkiton. And the story he told, it was okay for him to tell it because he is our grandchild. Good sheesh. Good sheesh. <laughs> we'll see if we can do this. Blessed are the brief, for they shall be asked back. <laughs> Good afternoon, honored guests. Uh, my Clinket name is Kase, and my English name is Naomi Michelson. Wishkitan Chatsiti, Chak Jak Nachatsiti, from the Shark House, Tus Hit. My mother was born here in Juneau, and my grandmother, Kase, and great grandmother, Dao Dau, grew up here, right here in the village. I am Dukdain Tan Yadi. My father's people are Adukte and Tan from Huna. And I would also like to recognize my opposite clans, Hlineidi, Luknachadi, Ganachadi. They bring balance and enrich our lives and help us to understand that it's all about relationships. We love our opposites. Uh, Nathan and I, 
live in uh, Ketchikan, and we are uh, amongst the beautiful Sanyaquan and Tantaquan peoples. So good night, <clears throat> I would also like to thank Dr. Rosita Wuerl, Sea Alaska Heritage Institute staff and board, and the Council of Traditional Scholars for their work in making this important and historic day a reality. Special thanks to Master Carver and respected elder Nathan Jackson and his apprentices for creating the incredible Wishkitan Pole. We are so honored to have Nathan put such care and artistic talent into the story of this pole. He is an example of being a service to the community and to the Tlingit people through his legacy and lifetime of work, his sharing of knowledge, and the warmth of his heart. My family and I really enjoyed visiting the Saxman Carving Shed many times during the last six months and have such gratitude to Nathan and his apprentices for helping us to understand what it means to be Tlingit, creating a path just like our ancestors. Our Wishkitan family loves you, Nathan. Ixichan. Being together here with all of you today is an example of opening the path to a shared community vision of strength and hope and remembering who we are. As a young girl, my Kaguantan uncle shared this Tlingit story. And it reminds me of today. They said, uh, one great day, we shall drown ourselves in the sea with our eyes wide open. And what I think that meant was that we will be awake and we will know who we are. And that sea, this water, this ocean right here is humanity. And the world is waiting for us as indigenous people and the values that we bring. So we are creating the future by honoring the past and celebrating the present. And we are healing. These kutia and everyone coming together here today are medicine. And uh, thank you so much. There's one fellow that I forgot. Uh, Took. Where's Here's Took. You know, that's one thing about uh, carvers. Uh, you need strong guys to help you. <laughs> okay. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Kune for teaching our language and preserving it. It, it, it has gone a long ways and now he is a, a doctor. I thank Kune Cheese, Kune. Kune Cheese, Kune. Yak echa, yak kani yan yan yedi, Ben Corneli is poha, Joseph Young. If I could get by young gay brothers from Taku. Crow, if you're out there, Vernon Williams, clan leader. And I wanted to thank uh, Nathan Jackson, his mom. She, she grew up in the village. I danced with her often. Young A.D., are you out there? If you come stand with me, I appreciate it. We run in a pack. Young AD. Thank you. Goodness, Chish. The butch. I will let James Williams speak first. He's come a long ways from Atlin to say a few words. Uh, TJ Young, are you here too?
They say only the strong and brave will stay. I, I want to thank the ones that stayed. <laughs> James? I don't know. Da, James Williams, my English name. Speak closer to the mic. I come from the Taku River. I had a brother who was our clan spokesperson has taught me that the Taku is our home office. And it used to bother me because I thought, well, how can it be when we don't have no power, no nothing now? But that's where we came from. The Taku is our office. Just like we have Juno, the capital. Well, our capital is in the Taku. And we're one of the last few people that have actually come from the Taku. I am glad that I came to this because it's making me happy to see I got all my brothers and sisters are here. We as family can go a long ways to make things better for the generations to come. And we're making that progress as today and going on. Goodness, cheese. Good afternoon. I grew up in the Juneau Indian Village. I was born in 1949 in the 1950s and 60s. I grew up there and back then there was a large native community of fishermen. And half, half of the fish, well, were half the fishermen fleet in Taku was Clinkett. And a lot of those clinkets came from Haines, Huna, Angoon. The Yanyadi had no problem sharing our river with everybody. The future, who knows what's going to happen. The hatcheries have taken over. But the Douglas Indian Association right now, with the majority Yanyadi people, are fighting to get our fishing back on the Taku. We would like another, nothing better than to get our fishing rights. Not subsistence rights, fishing rights. And we hope you people understand where we're coming from and support us. And we would welcome all of you on our river. And thank you. And thank you for the totem pole. Yep, yep. TJ Young, could you come forward? Joe? Oh, yeah. Joe Young. Brother, yeah. Do you stand with your brother anyway? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like to. Can you say a few words about the poll? Oh, you want me to talk about it? Yep. Or? Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm Joseph Young. Uh, I was chosen to do the Yanye Depot. And um, I guess we. Did, should I tell the story? Yeah, tell the story. Tell the story. Nope. Tell the story. Go ahead. So, so the poll I did was for starting at the top, we got the Eagle, which is the clan of the um, Yanye Depot, or the Yanye D people. And uh, below that is the glacier which which the two old ladies canoed uh, got a canoe and uh, went under the glacier to find the you know the um the uh the passage through the you know to the other side to the ocean because they were inland people and um so the two old ladies went under, underneath the glacier the uh the um it was, um, was kind of like melting, and it went underneath in the canoe. So on the pole, it has a canoe holding the two ladies underneath the glacier. And then under that is the, um, the, 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 the brown bear. And then the wise woman below that. And then on the base of the pole is the, um, 
the wolf. And um, yeah, that, that that's the that um, he's gonna tell the uh, the story of the uh, the people, but that was the uh, clans and the crest that, that that we were able to put on the pool. So um, yeah, I guess. Oh. Yes, my name is Lillian Klikunduwu. I am Yenyedi from Taku. And I was just asked to tell a bit of history about the story of the two old women. And I want to say that that's a song that came to us. It came to us from a recording that David Katzig had made. And he provided it to me. And I shared it with Rosita. And because of it, we learned this wonderful story and of our connection to other clans. And I think that's a real beauty about these polls is they remind us of how interconnected we are. And I just want to thank everyone who was a part of this wonderful project and the artists who were so sensitive and so responsive. They also included hemlock branches because the Yen Ye Di, we take our name from the hemlock. So Yun, the hemlock is on the sides of the pole. Um, so thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, and I wish everyone a really fabulous afternoon. I just want to thank uh, everybody for coming. Rosita Whirl, I appreciate you always. I thank uh, Richard Peterson. What I'd really like is to meet once a year to see if we could work together to unite to bring more back land to us. I thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Henry Peterson, and John Rowan, the carver, if we could respectfully ask our clan representatives to limit the number of speakers to maybe one or two, that would help us move along. My Klingit name is Yedi Dothin, and um, I would like to pay tribute to uh, the people who came before me. My mother Mary, who was actually born and raised at Taku River. My grandmother Susie, uh, who lived in the Douglas Indian Village, and we actually lived there with her uh, when I was very young and her brother was Jimmy Fox. Um, I'd like to thank Sea Alaska for everything that they have contributed to the city and borough with the language, the beading, the carving. Uh, I have participated in quite a few of of these uh, uh, things myself. And uh, we are Ishkatan. Our house is Ishkahit. And uh, I'm going to make give someone quite a few minutes here because I'm done. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good Oh, the carver. Yes. Uh, I would like to thank. John, I don't know his last name, but he is the carver. John Rowan for carving the Ishkatan totem pole. Good luck, Chish. Okay, here's John. Just to, I'll keep it real quick and short, I promise. Um, I want to thank uh, 
Dr. Rosita Kahani and SHI for thinking of us, of the Hinya Kwan to be a part of this here monumental project. It's stunning. I have to say that as a, as a young man, or as a kid, even as, as a child, I, I spent a lot of time in detention because we had the totem poles up there and that's what I would do instead of my schoolwork, I would draw the totem poles. And so I would get in trouble and I would have to stay in detention for it, which I would do and draw some more. Um, in my lifetime, when I was little, I never seen a totem pole go up. It wasn't until I was a grown man. And uh, just to be able to be on such a, a, a major project like this, to do it with two of my carving heroes, that's uh, Nathan Jackson and uh, Warren Peel. Um, I, I knew them when I was very young in high school. Uh, just to be able to be here and with the, the great talent that is, is here and shown. Again, Aklein Gunaschish, Aklein Gunaschish. Lisa Lang and Warren Peel to talk about the Haida pole. Ke'il juice. Would also ask uh, Theodore Peel, the apprentice, to come, and any other apprentices who worked on the pole. Our chiefs, we have hereditary chiefs here today. I'd like to honor them. Um, my good brothers and my good sisters. I'm, I wanted to say, um, my name is Ke'iljus, and I come from the village of Heidelberg, Alaska, and Prince of Wales. Today, I was asked to speak as a dignitary on behalf of Sea Alaska, which I am a, a border director. And so today, I'm not speaking on behalf of any Gwaigon, because that would be improper. And I have to beg for your forgiveness and um, humbly ask that you forgive me if I make any mistakes. That is not the intention. Um, this pole, I met with our carvers today and talked to them last night, and they gave me a picture of the pole, and we went through it and talked about it. So through that talk with them, the theme arose. I'm going to say two things because I was asked to say them, and um, the first one was that Warren Peel the master carver is a man of few words. And he said, you know, talking to him today was amazing. But he said to me, this story that I selected came from Bill Reed. And Bill Reed's, and we have the online, you can look it up, look up the story. But he said, I picked it because inside that story, he had the feeling that this was going to go away forever. And I think a lot of us had that feeling. And I, it made me think about the beautiful people that live in my hometown of Heidelberg. And I want to call out and stand up and hold them up. Robert Davidson puts handlings for bringing back our clan crests and potlatching in Heidelberg, Alaska, he brought back nine clan flags for which I hold the Yaklana's flag. And his son, his dear son, created that for us. Gyeong Isla is what they called it, and, I, and that's bringing it back. 
And Robert explained to us when things were nothing, when nobody had regalia, when nobody had the language, he stood up the first pole, the totem pole in Canada, in Masset. For that, Robert, we are forever indebted to you. And the reason I bring that up is because Warren, who is affectionately known in Heidelberg as Mr. T, don't ask why, that's what we call everyone who knows Warren really well. I want to, I ask for their words. He's the diamond, you guys. This is, Warren's the diamond. And this is the, the, the other apprentices are in the rough. They're not polished up yet, but they're getting there. So I wanted to just let you know that um, they allowed me to speak on their behalf. They're, they're both humble people. That's another one of our differences. Haidas do things in a different manner. And um, we appreciate and love and, and honor this, this doings today, SHI, and um, to everyone who helped support it, we support that. I want to speak about the carvers because that's what this is about today. From Bill Reed to Robert Davidson to the strong carvers on Prince of Wales Island. You just saw John Rowan, TJ Young, Joe Young. And now I want to talk about Mr. T because he would be the last person on earth to talk about himself. Warren and his brother Clarence Peel carved an 18-foot canoe that hung in the Sea Alaska building. The Carolin S brought the canoe up and they paddled it to shore here. It's an exhibit at the, um, one of the Sea Alaska buildings. Warren said that's when him and Teddy both learned about protocol and how a different village enters another village. I want to acknowledge his family, he asked that we acknowledge his wife. Is Sandra here? Did Sandra come? Sandra, he wanted me to ask, where is she? I can't see her. I'm blind too, but that doesn't matter. Um, and your children? Sandra Peels, his wife. I want to acknowledge his children. Tammy, are you here? There's Tammy. And Lindsay couldn't make it, is what I heard. Who else is here? Anyone else? Jossie. Jossie. Jocelyn's here, his granddaughter. We want to honor them. I'm only doing what I was told to do, so. Uh, who's that? Yeah, and I, yeah, Lindsay, his, his other, uh, didn't make it. Um, we went to find out his, um, his name. And I asked uh, Eva Rowan if she would share that with me. And um, Warren promised that he was going to uh, start practicing his name, but we'll work on that. We'll work on that later. And so I want to introduce to you his brother, Theodore Peel. Teddy's Haida name is Nanskangulas. Uh, Nanskangulas, yeah. And. Um, Teddy is uh, the apprentice, and he said the same thing Warren said. One of the hardest parts about this was finding somebody um, who was clean, somebody who wasn't doing drugs or alcohol. That's what they stand for, and they want everyone to know that's part of this healing. Warren said he took time. It took extra time. And then Teddy said he quit his day job to go carve with his brother. And I want to honor that. I want everyone to honor that. They're very humble gentlemen. So I'm really glad I had time to talk with them. Um, his wife, Shannon, is here. Shannon, where are you? There she is. There's Shannon. He wants to acknowledge Shannon. His daughter, is Sarah here? Oh, there you are, there you are. Her uh, son, Ted's grandson, he calls him Tiny Man, but uh, is his Haida, what they call him. 
And Clarence, are you here? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Clarence is, uh, was acknowledged yesterday for his years of sobriety, for being clean and sober. Can we honor this young man? And Kea, his daughter, is here as well, experiencing tribal assembly for the first time in her life. Okay, I'm going to give you some words from Nung Hang Yulas. This poll reminds and reassures me that our culture is thriving and living. This inspires our young ones to pick up a knife and a piece of wood and bring out what story it has to tell. I can see the curiosity in my grandchildren when they look at the artwork of the Pacific Northwest Coast. And it makes my heart sore to our ancestors if one of them, just one of them, followed in our steps. I'm the grandson of Jesse Natcon. Many of us in Heidelberg know her as Tink, Nana Tink. Frank Natcon, who was Nazi, who was Iklanas. That was his grandfather. He's the son of Anna and Clarence Peel. They're brothers. These two are brothers. Clarence Peel was a community leader in Heidelberg, and Anna was a language warrior for our community. When my brother Warren asked me for an apprentice for his poll, I jumped at the chance. I had another job, and I jumped ship. I think um, the last one that I'd like to acknowledge um, is, uh, I, his name is Han <laughs> He's number one. <laughs> And this is Mike Jones, um, and Warren asked that I invite him up because um, he called out for help, and the people from Kassan answered the call. And Mike had never carved before, but he came down, and, it, and, and now he's, he's got the fever, so, so to say. And I want to acknowledge you, Strongson, because you've come home, you've, you've embraced the culture, and you've come to the right people. You've come to the right people. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know how you guys operate up here, but when I'm told by Il Scalis, who is my elder, I do what she asked me to do. And she asked me to do this. She said, there's an article by Cyrus Peck, and I want you to read from it. She said, can you do that for me? And I said, yes, I can. <laughs> And it's a quote, and I want. she said it was applicable to today. Do you hear the whisper of your father, of your uncles? Their example is close to us. It is in the air. It is in the spirit. It is in our birthright and heritage. As the people were vigilant and brave in the battles of the past, he said, let us be brave in meeting the challenge of today. Please, please help me in honoring these gentlemen who do those exact things. Thank you. Hawa, hawa ditan lasay. Hawa talang. Would like to invite Rob Edwardson, TJ Young, Greg Frisbee, Andrea Cook, and Cadence Peel to talk about the Haida Raven Pole. Good afternoon. I just want to say, in case uh, Representative Peltola was wondering, Kangi uh, Haula, I think, is how you would say arm candy in Haida. <laughs> I'll, I'll get right into it. Um, the Lang Harale is Atlant is as the Gurungai Lagang. Gahuya Gustu de Kualagan. Yak planas udi ijung, cut nice to do ijung, skanja di nanu ijung, Verna Edwardson di au u ijung, Antlik di chanu ijung, Roy Edwardson di hangu ijung, Hoot Kengwa henu di keang, 
Robert Edwards and Hinu Yatshad Kishkyam. So what I said is uh, good people, one of the things I didn't say and I should have is Dulangesh and the Hangogang. So I said happy, uh, I'm happy to be here, good people, and I'm honored with your presence. I belong to the Raven Moiti, I'm Yaklanis from the Shark House. My grandmother was Nora Kogo, my mother is Verna Edwardson, my grandfather was Robert Kogo, uh, my father was Roy Edwardson, and my name is Rob Edwardson. The, uh, the Haida were organized into Eagle and Raven Moities, as was discussed earlier. There were 23 Eagle and 22 Raven Moities. Uh, our 22 Eagle, 22 Raven lineages within the, the each Moiety. Uh, each lineage consisted of a certain number of crests, and to honor uh, the Raven, the Haida Ravens, who this poll represents, I'd like to read the names of the Raven crests of the Haida's raven lineage. Killer whale, double fin killer whale, brown bear, rainbow, sea lion, moon, thunderbird, woman in the moon or berry picker, cumulus cloud, dogfish, wolf, flicker, raven, hawk, tree, mountain goat, Raven fin, sea grizzly bear, black bear, weasel, horned owl, skate, worm, black bear with abalone, sea lion's head, new moon, star, cirrus cloud, stratus cloud, dentilium carvings, drying frame. And I just wanted to make sure that uh, we, we read those crest names because all of us, both on the eagle and the raven side, have crests. Some, some uh, families have more than one crest that they can wear. Some have one, um, but everybody has crests. And about a hundred or so years ago, we went from tens of thousands of people down to just over 600. So there's a lot of vacancies in a lot of those crests. And I'd like to say while we're here today, and there's so many kids in the background, I would like to thank our young people for filling those ranks. And, and hopefully you'll continue doing that. So as we dedicate this, I wanna make sure that uh, we give TJ and his apprentices time to talk about the pole itself and, uh, and a little bit about them as carvers. Hello, thank you. Squayance Hinu Di Kiang. Squayance is my Haida name. I got it from my uncle, Raleigh Morrison. He's sitting right here, He's right there. So I got his name and I'll be giving my name to my, uh, my nephew one of these days. Um, it was an honor to carve this totem pole for the Ravens. Um, we got a chance to grow up with some really, really, uh, um, well-respected elders like my grandfather, Claude Morrison, um, uh, Grandma Helen. Um, we, so we, I feel lucky and privileged to grow up around that last generation of Haida speakers. It, it really meant a lot to us when we go up and visit our grand, grandparents every morning and every evening. Um, I want to introduce my apprentices real quick. This is Greg Frisbee. This is Cadence Peel, and we're missing one more. Andrea Cook, I don't know where she went. But I, yeah, we get a round of applause for them. And I also wanted to mention my mentor and my, and, 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 and my teacher, Robert Davidson. I'm, luck, I'm lucky to have him here. I owe a lot to him. Um, yeah, we give him a round of applause too. <laughs> I, I didn't understand the relationship between, how important the relationship is between a master and a student until I got to work with Robert Davidson. And now I'm finally at a point where I get to have my own apprentices. And, uh, and I didn't know how frustrating it was having <laughs> apprentices. Um, so this is, the, this is the future of the Kagani Haida art, uh, for better or worse. 
Uh, that's just what we're going to have. But anyways, it was, it was an honor to carve this totem pole for the Ravens. Um, I think it's this one right here. Um, thank you to SHI. Thank you to Sea Alaska for donating the log. Uh, Richard Peterson, my friend, he's always very supportive of everything that we do. And the community of Heidelberg, too. They, they really, we don't do any of these big projects by ourselves. We never do. We've been carving there for the last 20 years, but we always, we always need the community to help us. HCA put a roof over our head. Um, and uh, we had a lot of, a lot of company. When the carving shed turns into a community hall once we start carving, because everybody starts coming down and telling stories and bringing food. Before COVID, it was like that. It was like that. It was really common. Uh, so hopefully we can get back to that um, more often for these, next, for these next totem poles. So um, do each of you have any jokes? No jokes? OK, that's, we, uh, as you can see with all the totem poles here, the Southeast Alaska, when it, comes to, when it comes to carving totem poles, Southeast Alaska really has a reputation of putting out. So I think they did a really good job. It's an honor to be around all these other carvers and, and you folks here. So thank you very much. How are The, the last thing that I wanted to talk about, we talked about how the, uh, the, the way that we used to keep our history, the totem poles were part of it, the art was a big part of it, even though we didn't have a word for art. But the big part was there had to be people who witnessed it and remembered it. And in my introduction, I stated I was honored with your presence, and I am. And you can choose to make it more than just a presence or an attendance. You can actually be a witness. And our ceremonies, uh, we, formal ceremonies, we invited people to witness, but not just to kind of watch and then move on. You actually had a job. It was to remember, to, to faithfully observe what was going on, remember, and recall it when you were asked or when you, when you thought you should. And that's how we kept our history. And whether you're Plinkett, Haida, Simpson, or none of the above, you can actually become not just an observer of our history, which is this is right now, but you can become a part of it. You can become a mechanism of it. You can become a book on our library shelf. So I invite you to do that, and thank you very much. Dlang Kilagan. How uh we'd like to call up the Yanwasha. Nick Gallanen, Will Burkhart, Lee Burkhart, and Merritt Johnson talk about the Kaguantan pole. Yanwasha, Hachi At, Hagu. Wow. Yanwasha, please stand here. Kahani, Dr. Worrell would like to see the Yanwasha standing here. Nakaguantan. As we are assembling, I'm going to um, go ahead and begin my remarks just in the interest of time and out of respect for our faithful audience members who are probably very, very cold and wet at this point. <clears throat> my Tlingit name is Khat Khun. My taxpayer ID name is Carla Kasalukin. I am Kaguantan. Kaguantan Sha, Yanwa Sha, from the Box House. Our house originates in Sitka. However, my family also transplanted to Huna. <clears throat> the 
Ka Guantan and the Yanwa Sha, we are all one. However, the Yanwa Sha have a very um, special distinction in that we women of the Ka Guantan, we actually fought alongside our men whenever there was warfare. And one of the spoils of our, um, of our conflicts is the Navy uniform. Hence, you will see the Yanwa Sha women wearing sailor uniforms and sailor hats and naval uniforms here. Um, as you see with one of our admirals from the Klukwan and Haines area, my auntie Kahwe Leona Santiago is the admiral for the Klukwan and Haines Yanwa Sha. My mother to my left here, Wushtak Kitla, is uh, her, her name literally translates to the mother of two clans when the Kaguantan and the Wushkitan were one and they split. So with that, let me be, uh, give my remarks very quickly here. Atlein Gunashish, Anyat Kusani, noble people of this land, the Ak Kwan, Tli Nedi Yachtetan. The Kaguantan and the Yachtetan Klinedi of the Akwan have a long history, and we thank them for allowing us to gather here today. I want to thank fellow Kaguantan and distinguished artist Nicholas Galanin, as well as the Carver Apprentices, William Jr. and Lee Burkhart and Merritt Johnson, for your beautiful work and bringing forth this beautiful and distinguished kutia. We are so very honored to have had Mr. Galanin carve this breathtaking masterpiece for our clan. The Kaguantan totem pole on the Juno waterfront depicts our three clan crests, the wolf, the brown bear, and the killer whale. But not on the pole is the Kaguantan Yunwa Sha crest. And thus we have brought this crest forward by wearing our navy hats and our re with our regalia. The Yunwa Sha want to thank the the Alaska Heritage Institute for uplifting us by publishing our story of how we acquired this atu. I want to thank the Alaska Heritage Institute and the tremendous leadership of Kahani, Dr. Rosita Worrell, for her vision of making Juneau the Pacific Northwest Coast Arts Capital of the World. And with that, I'd like to invite other Kaguantan Sha, other Yanwa Sha, and our men too in singing our Yanwa Sha song, Anchors Away, as a gesture of our appreciation to the artists, to Dr. Worrell, and to the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute. That's our drummer. Being asked again. Okay. Yingawane. Again.
in this cheese. Ye hi asin yuha du asak, look na hadi hatsati. Kagwantan yadi ayahat shikakwan. My name is Ye hi asin, Nicholas Glennon. I'm look na hadi, child of the Kagwantan, people of Sitka. Uh, <clears throat> really, really honored to be here. Uh, Rosita, S H I, Kune. Um, it's a, a monumental occasion, and uh, I want to thank everyone, the, all the other artists. It's an honor to, to be working alongside you. Um, my late, when, when we were offered to do this project, it was about the time my late father, um, Dave Glennon, who's Kaguantan, uh, walked into the forest, so this was really <clears throat> meaningful for me to to um, to be here and do this so uh, Lee Burkhart my apprentice my cousin um, will Burkhart who's around here uh, is also my mentor will be my mentor for life uh, worked on this project alongside us um, I think I have about 27 more minutes you know, so <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think um, real quick here, just the importance of a project like this happening in light of the recent burning of the Taku village at Douglas, or building a school on Tlingit graveyards at Saik, or the forced relocation of the Tlingit in Filipino neighborhoods. This is this is a a, a great occasion to 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 be here together like this. So, and uh, one, more, one more quote I want to give you. Uh, when I was told we had three minutes, I, I met with Hune, and I'm, I'm always uh, grateful for your thoughts and wisdom here. And he gave me a quote from Norman Jackson, who's Duck uh that I think is important to share here. And it's, maybe they used to be able to see way out in front of them into the future first two, they always took care of them. They were always talking about it, their grandchildren. A place was made for them. Gunashish. Yeah, you did. Oh. Ya took nach adi, hot ya, we knock it on Hans Chester and the carvers, Mick Beasley, apprentices, Jano Dietrichson and Jeremy Peterson. Before we get into that, uh, I forgot one. I forgot one little thing. Um, I have a helper, and that's my wife. She paints, she painted the totem pole, but also she took care of all the money. <laughs> all right. Gunnar Cheesh, Dorica, Rockwell, Jackson, also a master weaver. Knock it on. This is what I Tash got to a Hadi. Well, it's got to be a. Where's 
We are the Kuhakari. We want to thank you all for being here. We appreciate uh, all the carvers that have done their miraculous work on it. Uh, where's our favorite carver? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a real testimony to the work that uh, these folks have put in over the very quick time <laughs> that they've had available to them. It's amazing to be here with you. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of our eagle friends who have already shown us their amazing poles. Our uh, Dekina friends have shown theirs. We're looking forward to the Simshan that's coming soon. But for now, I'm going to let. Uh, well, I'll speak up for a minute. Next. Okay, I'm going to let the the carver do the do the magic now. Okay. Hey, thank you for all being here. Uh, we're honored to be here amongst such gifted artists and to be able to participate with everybody. We live in Juneau and we're very happy to have one of our poles along in this totem trail. Juno's going to come up and he's going to give a few words about the white frog. Thank you for allowing us to be on your land and share our history with you. The Kluknakari pole that we have put up is from Gunukukwan, Dry Bay. Long ago, the Kluknakari were building a house. And when they were building the house, you dig down for the fire pit. And you dig down to put the house posts in. And you dig down to put the posts to hold up the walls. When we did that, we found a dead white frog. And so we set it aside to give respect, to bury it later. Respect for all things. That's what our grandparents teaches us. Respect for all things. And so while we were continuing to build the house, this white dead frog came back to life. And we took it as a good sign that that house would be prosperous. And so therefore, we have used this as a symbol for the Kluklakari. And that's what you will see on the, on the trail. The matriarch, the raven, and the white frog. Aklang Gunashish. I got a lot of coho relatives here, and I just got to acknowledge them. It'll be disastrous if I don't. <laughs> this is my Aunt Mary, my mother's sister, Mary Lekhanoff, Geraldine Brown, and a lot of relatives underneath. <laughs> I thank you all for standing up here with us. Cheers. While the Shungu Kedi are preparing, I might suggest uh, Ricardo Whirl, Dennis Katzik, Ed Hotch, Jackson Paulus. Christian Dalton, Tim Flannery, Raymond Took, Gregory, Enrico Whirl, Hatia. Bill Pfeiffer. Anyat kusani, anyat kusani, gunas cheesh, gunas cheesh. Shangu kedi aya, 
We also have our children of Shungu Kadi. Jihkat Kwan Ayakat. Kate Hitta. Kaud Li Yayi Het. Kashish Ki Het. Ye Oe Kuge Hash Hitti. Akish Has Luka Hadi. Akli Hu Has Luka Hadi. Akduhanuku. We would also like to thank and recognize the Deshitan, Yechnawu Joey Zubaf, Gunas Chish, to the Dakhtain Tan, Kenny Grant, for the Ravens bringing their Atu, our ceremony, and on behalf of my clan brothers, Ed Hotch, Dennis Katzik, who could not be with us, they wanted to make certain that we acknowledge and thank Jackson Paulus for this magnificent Shungu Katie pole, this artistic, memorable rendition of all of our clan history, never before have we had a Shungu Katie poll that tells the story of how the Thunderbird Crest came to our people after a clan member lost two of her sons. It features the white bear, one of our important spirit guides and helpers. It features the Nachain Kaudli Yai Hit house lowered from the sun. And you heard earlier on the bottom, it features one of our ancestors, Yin De Yonk, who was not paid by a member of the military, and so they took his name, Schwatka, and they took the uniform as payment. The Shungu Kadi have to thank Sea Alaska Heritage, Sea Alaska Corporation for this Shungu Kadi poll. And we accept the responsibility that comes with this kutia in Akwan, in Taku Kwan land, it's a big responsibility that has been given to us. And I know our, our ancestors, Kingiste Kuski, are, are smiling, they're happy. And so we have this obligation to ensure that everyone knows our story, that we take care of this pole. These kutia, they have a spirit. And look how many there are now on our shores, like there used to be. We are achieving hashuka, one of our core values, our connection to our ancestors. They see us now. We also are fulfilling another core value, wuch yach, spiritual balance, reciprocity. And it's important for this community, for the non-native people who make Southeast your home alongside of us now, that you understand this reciprocity, how we treat each other, our respect and balance. And lastly, I want to say to the children, to all the children here, 
you remember this day. Remember this day. And you tell your grandchildren and your children that this was the day that the Clinket, Haida, Simpson people and our ancestors are once again represented. We've never left. We've always been here. And so now you have this responsibility to continue what we have given you today. And it's cheese. And we have to bring balance, and so we're, we're going to do one really quick song. Hello, 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 hello. I'd like to thank the Shangu Kedi for allowing me to carve their pole and for allowing us to share space here together for that beautiful song and for the bringing the children here. I'd like to acknowledge and thank the Ak Kwan who have allowed for the presence of multiple native peoples here today. The Taku Kwan, those named and those who still need to be named and whose presence and visibility will continue to grow. It's incredible to be here with the language so present. Thank you, Hune, and for those who traveled from afar to be with us today. It's incredible to have the dancers, the drumming, the singing, all of you who have spoken, our voices on the land. It's an honor and privilege to be here. My name is Jackson Paulus. My legal and family name is Stephen Paul Jackson. So Jackson Paulus is, you know, a little extra legal. I belong to the Daklawedi clan of the Shilkat Kwan, given the name Nakushta. My grandfather is Austin Brown. I'm a child of the Luka Khadi from the Shilkut Kwan. My father is Yithyedi also known to many as Nathan Jackson. His mother is Nancy Jackson. I'd like to name, and here I'll be reading, continuing, because my name is also given to me by Ojibwe friends and filmmakers, Jackson two words for every one word. So we know that naming is important, and I'd like to acknowledge my parents, my mother, Dorica Jackson, named, doc, in, adopted into the Daklawedi and given the name Kun Kla, or Flicker Mother. Nathan Jackson, who you've heard it from today already. My wife and partner, Ashley Byler, holding the fort down at home, adopted into the Luka Hadi in 2017. My best friend, I'd like to thank her for my energy. 
the dedication put toward our children in support of me, my work, her work, and our work. That support is undeniable, cannot be overstated. My son, 13-year-old Julian Jackson, Kayak, which was translated, beautiful face of a man. He's 13, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> he stepped up and into this time to support our family. Six-year-old Kigani Jackson, Kutaktik, who remains an inspiration with his energy and enthusiasm. My sister Rebecca Jackson, Kluchduwu, who continues to encourage and provide friendship. My niece Aisha Laqued, Kinduat, who helps keep perspective with her levity. I'd like to thank all the apprentices on this Shangu Kedi poll. And here I'll allow space. I know I have, the time is limited, but I hope you'll forgive me and allow them to um, represent themselves for a moment. But I will name them first. Christian Dalton. Tuk, aka Raymond Gregory, who did the amazing dancing today. Norman Nakong Jr., who's Haida. Tim Flannery. Bill Pfeiffer. Marcus Blair. Not here today. Rico Whirl. In addition, the help of an anonymous carver, an experienced carver who continues to encourage me to thank myself. I won't do that right now. <laughs> but I'd like to give time to uh, each one of them to say a few words, if, they would, uh, if they'd like. Hi, my name's Christian Dalton. Um, I'm Tekwiti San Yuquan. My mother is Valerie Stanley, and her mother was um, Agnes Perez. And I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity um, thank you guys for all being here. Thank you, Rosita, Lance, and everybody. And I'm just very grateful. I'm very grateful to be here. And my mother and father couldn't be here, so I'd like to say thank you to them. And to my son, Rook, who's at home too. Thank you. Gung, Clean Gay, Digalagin. Wakak, Hino Diki Ong, Saxman, Studuijan. I'm happy to see you all here today. My name is No Shame, and Saxman is where I'm from. Norman Nakong Jr. is my English name for tax purposes only. <clears throat> but I want to thank uh, everyone for being here. My son, Simon Nakong, my father, Norman Nakong Sr., and my mom, Dolores Nakong. I just want to thank for everyone for being here. I want to say thank you, and Haida uh, Hawa. Gunish Chish and in Deutschen. Thank you. Ganach Aya Yada, you do a sach. Ganach Hari Hatsiti, Yech Nachatsiti. Kitchkahan Aya Hat and Kawak Aya Hat. My name is Tim Flannery. My Clinket name is Watcher of the Ganachari. I come from Ketchikan. My, my mother comes from Kloak. Uh, her name is Barbara Guthrie. And uh, it's an honor to be uh, one of the few selected to uh, assist in the, uh, the carving of the totem poles, <clears throat> the Kutia. <clears throat> and uh, I'm glad you all stayed. You know. uh, good as Chish. My name is William Pfeiffer, Clinket name Buckle Sausage. I was named after James Grant from Huna. My, uh, I'm Duck Dame Ton, Strickenade Yetki. My mother was Pauline Hinchman. My stepfather is John Hinchman Sr. Um, before I forget, I also want to thank Nathan Jackson for imparting all the knowledge to let me be able to have the skills to work on this project because a personal project that uh, is of value. My uncle was Frank C. Sr. and he was Shungo Katie 
I followed them around as a kid, and it was a great honor to be able to have this opportunity to work on this poll. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you again, apprentices and um, carvers, for being here, supporting, and for bringing your family here together. Um, really, without the help of these apprentices, carvers, artists themselves, with their tireless dedication to learning and improving this project and part particular sculpture, the Shangu Kedi pole could not have happened. Regarding master, I'd like to move away from that term, not only because I don't think of myself a master and don't want to, but because I think the obligation toward mentorship and reciprocality moves beyond that of mastery. I consider that all those who worked on the Shangu Kedi pole and those who've worked previously with me continue to teach me. We teach and mentor each other and we'll that will continue to grow, learning how to reciprocate in our efforts. Along these lines, I'd like to thank all the lead carvers on this project who provided encouragement along the way. It's been uh, incredible to work alongside you in parallel, joining our efforts toward this occasion. More than the carvers, all the artists, those making the bronze masks that we see here before us, the weavers, basket makers, those sewing skins, regalia, which the singers, drummers, and dancers give purpose to hear our languages, our voices on the land. I'd also like to run through my list. Um, Juno Pham, Amelia Brown, Anna Brown, Christina, cousin Gail Dabalis, Mick Beasley, Rick Beasley, all my family here in Juno, who I've not named. I'd like to th thank those who assisted Jim Samard, Shar Fox, Gold Belt Corporation, Todd Antioquia, and so many others in those early moments when I first started carving here in this gold belt that's now inside the tram, um, providing encouragement, support, material support, assistance along the way. I'd like to thank those who helped at that time as well, Byron and Tony Malott and Anthony Malott, the Shangu Kady clan, Ed Hotch, who couldn't be here today, Ricardo world for those wonderful words. Dennis Katzik, who couldn't be here today. And in my own memory, and in the memory of many others, Anna Katzik and David Katzik, incredible and inspiring people who were always quick to support and encourage. I'd like to thank Sea Alaska Heritage Institute with the leadership of Dr. Rosita Wuerl, who keep, kept and keeps this visionary project alive with her commitment and energy. Those funders who supported included the Mellon Foundation, Rasmussen Foundation, and future funders. Without this, this is not possible, or it would take a little longer. It's important to have your continued support to support our time, our currency, and our vitalization. I'd like to thank those providing material support in the completion of the project getting the poll and our crew here, including Russ King, Heidi Davis, all at SHI, Dixie Hutchinson, Kai Montour, Misha, those recording with the cameras for these moments for our future generations, Lee Kattiner, Chuck Smythe, Donald Gregory, who helped with plugs, and so much else, Kari Groven and all the SHI staff who have continued their work tirelessly. I'd like to thank those at Dawson, Brian Pierce and the crew who put their mind and bodies on the line. Nate Williams, Michael Patience, Eric Ladd, T Danny Moore, Dijah Pierce, Anthony Arenas, Jason Hall, Ben Briett, David Brown. I'd like to thank those further south in the city of Saxman, Mayor Frank Saluto, Richard Shields, Harvey Shields, Norman Natkong Sr., Woody Anderson, and those in Saxman who put their support behind Carver's trying to work there. I'd like to thank Josh Moon who kept um, kept great effort toward getting the pole out the door. I'd like to thank Samson Construction, Samson Barge Company, those who helped move the pole into this arena. I'd like to thank Dale and Bacala, Leonard Nance for getting the crates done. And in Tontaquan, I'd like to thank Willard Jackson, Richard Jackson, Norman Jack Jackson, Israel Shotridge, and the rest of their family for representing, staying there, and providing their encouragement. I'd like to thank my New Red Order compatriots, Adam Khalil, 
and Zach Khalil, the Jibway artists and filmmakers, those who offered support keeping so many of our projects going while I focused on this carving, keeping the friendship alive and giving me the name, as I mentioned before, so this is the second time I guess I'm saying it, Jackson, two words for every one word. Apologies. But most of all, I want to thank those who went before us, whose stories we were able to keep alive to speak to us, those Thunderbirds who lost lives in the acquisition of the crest, the white bear who led people over the glacier, the children of the sun, the house lowered from the sun, particularly the youngest child, in some versions a son, in some a daughter, in some somewhere in between, but a figure of revitalization and using the power of words to change minds and change the tides of conflict, to Schwatke, the taking of the name, the military uniform of Lieutenant Schwatka, who fought in the Indian Wars and went on to explore Alaska and Yukon and did not repay as was promised. They are all a reminder to us all to keep asking how can we commit to recip sorry, how can we commit to reciprocality? What can be given back? And how can we, together with both legal and extra legal efforts, give it back? Gunal Chish. Okay, how are you? Gunal Chish. Okay. Just like to remind Jackson Pollock that we have an office for you at the University of Alaska Southeast that's really empty. Okay, Johan, you can ha a shoe aya hosatin, a shoe aya hosatin. I can see the end. We're gonna make it. Made it through a rainstorm, windstorm, sunshine, sunset, sunrise. Okay, volcano. <laughs> volcano. Okay, yeah. uh, I'd like to invite Barbara Kedienti Nelson, Tommy Joseph, Christina Cranston, and Will Peterson. private joke. This, this has been my mitten. <laughs> Our Athlean AD family has been taking good care of me back there. I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is I've been asked and given the privilege to speak on behalf of the, the gooch and the chalk, um, the wolf and the eagle for the pole that has been carved and stands on the other side of this building. The bad news is that while, well, part of the good news is that while I represent and will speak on behalf of the Gooch and the Chalk, um, I'm not going to ask them all to come up here and speak. But the bad news is that I'm going to take their minutes <laughs> because I do have a prepared statement. And I want to do this carefully and, and, and as best as I can. As I was listening to the Shungu KD and as I was sitting among you, I saw Albert Kukesh. I saw David Katzik. I saw Clarence Jackson. I saw Byron Malott. I saw my mother, Irene. I saw my father, Andres. That's the power of us. When we come together, we stand as one. And I was reminded of Kingus Day's words, the blood of our ancestors run through my veins. They run through your veins. It is in us. So we can do this. We're almost done. I also have to say to Elder Kenny Grant, thank you for recognizing us women as warriors. Because us women know that we have to fight for peace. We know this. Gunish Chish. These monuments of cedar will stand for our children and our children's children, and they need it. Aklain Gunish Chish on Yat Kosani, noble people of this land, for standing together in this momentous occasion to bear witness to these kutia, which tell for generations to come our collective ancient stories of migration and occupants of Ha Ani. My name is Eshkok Ech Ka Yanis Ach. Tekwe di, Shanakit, Hootsit, Kline di, Ilakano Yadi, 
Deshitan Dutchkan Kutsnuu Kwan. My recently departed mother is Irene Hunter Kadienti. Jige Kla Ka Juna Kla. My departed father is Andre Sakino Kadienti Sr. Ilocano, Ilocasur. He was given the name of my father's grandfather, William George, Taka Line Di Dog Salmon on Karhit, by her opposite, her cousin in the Western Way, Dr. Walter Sogoloff. He also gave my husband Norval, who is Anangan, his, his name too, Shgundi. Shgundi was uh, Dr. Sobolov's little name, and he gave it to my husband to carry. I'm going to also call out my, my brothers' and sisters' names, because as standing here for the Chach and the Gooch, I can offer you their names and therefore invoke the spirits of those that have gone before us. My brother Andy Andres is here with us. Yonkotza, my brother Carlos, Duck Nakin, my brother Carling, Cage, my sisters Andrea, Kassanda U, my sister Rinalda, Antokoat, my sister Maxine, Akustine, and my little sister Janie, Fleidutin. I also see my niece, Dion, and, and her children among us too. I serve you as a director of Sea Alaska Corporation and as chair of the Sea Alaska Shareholder Relations Committee, as a trustee of Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation, and as an officer of the land-based tribe of this region, Douglas Indian Association, also known as Taku Native Tribal Government, TNT. And I'm a DIA representative on the search board of directors. Clarence Lighty spoke before you uh, earlier today he is our president. Also with us, and I see them still here, is DJ Williams, Nita Cornell, Chris Cornell, Norman Sarabia, and Henry Howard and Paul Marks Sr. Also notable is DIA's tribal administrator, Andrea Kedienti, and her staff, Kamal Lindoff, Cindy DeWitt, Bernadine Deasis, Alyssa Blattner, and there are a few more, I'm sorry I've missed your names. It is a humbling and sensitive endeavor we're here to do today in that we are physically standing, which was once high water of the beach land of the shared living space of the Auk and the Taku Kwan. I'm grateful that the spokespersons of these clans have allowed me and you to live, work, and speak on their ancestral land, Santa Kahini and that they have graciously allowed these kutia to stand with them in the effort to restore us collectively as a people, our language, our traditions, our ceremonies, our history, because they cherish us. We heard this today from them, that today will bring us together as a people. So Gunish Chish. This kutia that I've been asked to represent the chalk and the and the Gooch is dedicated to the Wolf and Eagle clans of Ha'ani as their crests look upon us, the Wolf Crest, the Eagle Crest, the Thunderbird Crest, the Shark Crest, the Killer Whale Crest, and the Brown Bear Crest. The Chalk and the Eagle Crest includes as notable the many Gooch and the Chalk, the Wolf Eagle clans, which did not survive the Great Flood or the pestilences, or the epidemics, or the other calamities that came upon us. I also want to make note that this is the week that our Jewish brothers and sisters acknowledge the souls of the Holocaust. We remember, we remember, we remember. Bear with me as I call out the Gooch and the Chalk clans. Kaguan Tan, Tlukwe Di, Degis Dina, Dakhlewe Di, the Wushkitan, the Chukane Di, Kadak Adi, Sane Tene Di, Sitkwe Di, Kuk Hitan, 
kaka hitan, sagwe di, nis adi, wasane di, nas te di, nanya a ayi, sik nakadi, kuk adi. My brown bear paws are frozen. <laughs> Kayashi di ke di tan, kakus hitan, nas te di, nek edi, shangu ke di, te kwe di, yanye di. We will never forget, nor will our children or our children's children ever forget the clans represented here in these kutiyas, which masterfully and mindfully carved by Tommy Joseph, Kagwan Tan. Nath Kauch, Sitka Kwan, and his apprentices, Christina Cranston and Will Peterson. Mr. Joseph, I wish to share from you, f to you a personal uh, story. My brothers and sisters' names, who I called out, were, our mother was a survivor of boarding school. We grew up in this village, Santa Kahini, and we had a rough time here of racism. We had a rough time in, in the city and in the schools, and it marked us, and we endured. I wish for you to know that my children and my children's children and the children of this, of this community will lean on what you've done here for us. Your peers, the other master carvers, have shared with me that this kutia exemplifies the traditional form line of old that you captured in spirit and essence the sophistication and the intricacies of our ancient art form. The gooch and the chalk, thank you. Aklain Gunishchish, if you all would help me to acknowledge and, and, and let us listen to Tommy Joseph and to his apprentices. Gunishchish, Gunishchish. Um, I was not expecting to come up here and talk in front of y'all, but um, here we are. Um, um, what an amazing ride it's been. Um, um, yes, uh, the idea of making ten, 10 different totem poles by 10 different carvers and their apprentices, and um, we're looking at six different communities. Um, there's a whole lot of differences there. It's pretty amazing to have all these differences to come together to this community. Um, I just want to say thank you to uh, Juno and SHI for, for giving us the opportunity to do this. Uh, sorry my apprentice, Will per um, Peterson, is not here. He flew in this morning, first thing. He was at a bachelor's party last night in Sitka. Uh, flew in this morning for 8 o'clock interview here and was here until he had to leave to catch the airplane. He's getting married tomorrow, and so he misses this, this part of the ceremony, so uh, I'm sorry he's not here, but uh, uh, thank you to him too, and Christina, my apprentice here, Christina Cranston, thank you. Just one final note, I was uh, watching and observing the, the carvers of these poles, and let's never forget what they endured, the taku winds, the, the blowing uh, ice coming in their faces, and the sacrifice of time being away from their family. Really, really, the, the love that you bring to us has warmed Santa Kahini. Gunishchish. Gunishchish, Yayedet Kusin, Jackie Peter, TJ Young, Greg Frisbee, Andrea Cook, Cadence Peel. Gunas Chish. Shaya Aldeneki, Anyakusani, Ak Ishas, At Atas, Akaniyan. Donawak, Gakling, Kushtak, 
kakaslaat ang karaksin sa nat kaya cha u cha uya uya awe asli kuhas has kak adatani I called out some of my ancestors to be here today so that you know standing with me here today it is their voices not me who is speaking I call them out because when I thought about this poll and all these kutias going up today what a blessed day but also what a heavy day as we think about the Raven clans and the list of the Raven clans, I thought about the Carvers. And I thought, how, how can they, how can they work every day knowing that this kutia is one way of representing our people, representing who we are, telling our stories, laying claim to our land, and yet, there are some who are no longer with us. This kutia has to remind us of those that are gone, those that are lost, but never really lost. I thought about this and I was trying to come to peace with that. And I realized when I thought about the words of my ancestors and the words of Donna Walk, as he always talked to me about the people, the forest people, and we always talked about how our ancestors, they walk into the forest. They walk into the woods. And in the mornings when you can see the haze over the trees, you know they're warming. They're warming up the day like the warming of our hands when we, get, when we greet someone, greeting the day. And their roots in the trees, they hold each other. They, they go throughout the mountains and down the valleys, and they're holding each other up. Those are our ancestors' roots, and we're all connected. So even those raven clans who are no longer with us, their people, their clans, their voices are still with us. I want to read to you the list of the, the raven yethna, the clans of the raven. And some of them are here, some of them are not. And some of them are small and diminished. For example, when we left the Nas River, our clan, the Sukhaadi, and traveled up, we split. And our clan was large. And um, our, clan, uh, our clan was large, like, like many others. And we came up to Klakwan, and we were greeted in Klakwan, but left behind a few of the Takwedi, a few that are still there in, Ra in Wrangell, but the most of us have, 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 have left and become something else. So the, the Yethna, Gan Ach Adi, Tak An Adi, Sluknak Adi, Ganak Tedi, Tek Adi, Ishkitan, Kak Aya, Kushk Ida, Kas Chanedi, Kiksadi, Tiatan, Tiendedi, Deshitan, An Ak Itan, Tlenedi, Tak Dain Tan, Sukhwak Adi, Nao Shaka, excuse me, Nao Shakaka Ayi, Kwash Kwashki Tan, Hue Hin Adi, Yis Khan Adi, Sukhwin Adi, Ku Yadi, Tlake Tan, Sakwe Sak. Teen AD, Kajuk Hitan, Tan AD, Kuk Hitan, 
kaye adi tukwe ye di kask akwe di tlakwe di kuyek adi were the clans and if I missed any I apologize because it's important. We don't want to ever forget our clans, just as we don't want to forget our ancestors. We want to remember them. And so today, as we honor the, the Kutiyas, and particularly this Kutiya for, the, for those of the Yesnach, I wanted to remember the song that comes from our clan. Cha ade ye unatiga a cleath kuhas ani. So our voices will be heard on our grandfather's land forever. Cha kleik yesu yadu uahan. Forever we are still here. Let us not ever be forgotten. I want to honor and thank those carvers, TJ Young from the Yondas clan from Heidelberg. I was there when we raised the totem pole for UAS in the traditional way with the ropes. And I thought how great it was to see such a strong young carver and his team coming to help us raise that totem pole. I wasn't there, but I was, but I do know that he was there for the totem poles that Gaja hit and how important that was for us to have that marker in the village here in Juneau. I want to thank his um, uh, apprentices, um, Greg Frisbee from my language class, <laughs> Greg Frisbee, Andrea Cook, Clarence Peel as apprentice. Um, you've heard from earlier today, but I know it's not just the person who stands in front, it's the person who stands beside you that helps you get the work done. And I'm glad to see them all standing together in that way. It, it really was an honor and privilege, or it was a privilege for us to honor your ancestors in creating this poll. Um, when Sea Alaska asked us, they said, make sure and do this one first and then do the Hyder Raven pull. <laughs> so I think they wanted to make sure it got done in time. They said, no problem. We do, uh, we do have one more apprentice to uh, introduce. Her name is Andrea Cook. Um, can we get a round of applause for her? She's, she's been working with us for about, about three or four years and she's really, she's really doing good. So. I just wanted to acknowledge her and, and thank you for uh, trusting us to carve your pole, to honor your ancestors. Hella. Thank you, Gunas Chish. And I too want to thank you all for staying to the, to the end of this meeting, but I couldn't leave without saying a special thank you in my, in my heart to Rosita for the work that she's done to make this dream come true, something we couldn't even believe before become a reality. And it's to her and it's the people at SHI and to see Alaska and to all of us who keep inspiring more and more, who keep reclaiming more and more. So our voices will never be forgotten on our grandfather's land. Goodness, cheesh. Uh, I'd like to thank the Raven who was yelling during the Raven clans back there. It was, it was great timing. I'd like to invite Alfie Price, David R. Boxley, and Clifton Guthrie to talk about the Simshian poll. Alfie Price Ada Ade Awa Ata 
Harala is Shago Pinu D. Kiladaki Ong Donald Price the Hong U. Ejin Tutskan Kilada this Eskian Haida the Hong U. Ejin Anyat Kusani Waiwa. Tutskan Kena, she go up, you had to a sock. Ne hurry, Dutch Kana, I had. She go up to why you, some shano, did hide, you did get a guinea at school. Kiss but water dip tegu. Get land will not touch you. Wabem on a neck. Why you? It's a good go to the mess to the question she get when. Louis, I'm going to the some Alex to question. I think to go to the hot car go to she get when. Louis, I'm going to see a hot car to Tim Chien Kwa. Good uh oh, uh, I'm Sigidum Hanaach, Fran. Sigidum Hanaach, Dr. Wurl. Sim Gaget. Lika Gaget. Man Gaget. Kabo Walksik. And a hail the Kabaskuska. The way I'm going to needs a cup of school, a cup of school. Good day, Dr. Wuerl. She go up. Mr. Ptan, this Tim Xian, Council of Traditional Scholars, Scholars, Qua. At a Luam Gordu, at a Edzixagodu, at a Basku, at a school, a school, a Doganu, the Mestu, the Tra Nitsim Chien, Astiwalu, Lakskik, Astiwalu. Lachibu, Astiwalu, Kanhada, Kispitwada, Diptegu. This is Dr. Wuerl Gudachis, Mestu, at a wild hike up San Gudachu, the um, Sim Gaget, the Council of Traditional Scholars. Pesegu dim, uh, Pesegu dim, come go swell the Lachub, the Ptan, the, uh, Slagiget, wells at a, uh, Ayelch. At a, an, an notice, uh, Sim Gaget. A notice, Sim Gaget, the, the Welsh, come go Welsh, like you. At a, look will, look will Ayelch canoe, look will Inogu, the Hoi, uh, the Shragi get a Welsh. Uh, Na ceremony gui the marine park at a regadu monum ax this m gun at a hasagudim come goes wells the lachub at a hasakum simget hike up tan the tsimshian.
na uh, na hab habam the uh, aware spoon <laughs> and uh, um, lugatza monam aks and guanka lachub aware ptan and Hashakam dim wells shaggy get a yell to ten. The owl Akiti Lishku ha and true ptan. Um, Zida. Zida will lie in na how you we am hound. Why what? Zida will lie in na how you we am hound. Why what? Oh, why what? <laughs> Do I exit Newsome? So I thank you very much for having me. I'm very fortunate to stand before you and to share about um, this important thing to, to me, to us, to all of us. I, I really want to acknowledge our relationship with Lachyubam Git Aug, Fran Galchish. When I was asked to share some words, um, when I first started talking, I, I shared a little bit about how it's a little bit awkward for me to stand here on behalf of the entirety of Tsimshian people. According to our Ayauch, I could tell you things about Kishpitwada, uh, Gitlan, uh, the House of the Blue-Billed Duck. Those are things that come under my purview that I could share about, that I could tell those people how to do things. So I was a little bit apologetic to my uh, uh, other clans, um, but in this day and age and in this place that is not our lachub, uh, we, we, we make adjustments and we stand together because we, we need each other. Waiwa. And then I shared a little bit of the process. When, I, when we were talking about this, uh, putting up these ptsan, and I wanted to do it in such a way to honor our ayauch, our lflageget, our traditions. So I asked my fellow fellows on the Council of Traditional Scholars if we could have a little ceremony where we talk to the ground Lachyub is the word I keep using. Um, it also means territory. So when I say Lachyubum Git Aug, I'm saying the, the land of the Akkwan in Samaya. So I wanted to, um, to observe this tradition. And so we, we wound up having this really nice ceremony over there and speeches were made, songs were sung. It was a beautiful time. And it was, the weather was just like earlier, where it was raining and cold, but a handful of us went over to where the Tsimshian Tsan is now. And uh, I gotta tell you this little secret, and maybe this will strengthen our relationship with some of y'all. The map wasn't very clear to me. So we went over there and there were two holes and, I, and we, we went to the first one, and so we poured, I said, Monam uh, we poured some salt water from, from Ak. We put some, sprinkled some salt water there, and we, we brushed the ground with our cedar boughs, and we spoke to the land and, and thanked it and told it it's got an important duty to perform. And we encouraged the land and we thanked it. And we were all done, and I looked up, and I said to my friends, Kodugui, what's that? There was another 
another hole over there. <laughs> so um, my friends uh, who um, worked on the Hyder Raven poll, your poll has a strong future. <laughs> Nothing's going to touch it. <laughs> Once we realized our error, it was okay. We went and we did it all over again for the Tsimshian Tsen. So I just wanted to share with you a little bit about this. We wanted to, to honor our traditions. And I mentioned it's a little awkward for me to speak on behalf of all Tsimshian, but again, uh, so I'm very, very, grateful and honored to be able to share a little bit about what I know of, of our traditions with you all. And uh, um, it, uh, very, <laughs> in which language am I speaking? <laughs> I'm very fortunate to be able to introduce my, uh, my friend, my teacher. Oh, that's another thing I, I need to mention. Um, Ayokinu the Kualon Suwalimska Samaya Kwa. I have a very rare opportunity and very fortunate to be in the presence of three of my Samayak language teachers today. Some Thodam Nusam, Gibam Laha, and Bapsen, or Ayokinu the Suwalauksa Samaya Kwa. I'm very, very fortunate to, it's, it's a rare opportunity to be amongst my teachers. So without further blabbering, uh, I'd like to introduce my friend and my teacher, Gibam Lacha. I believe that my email had a uh, typo and it said 30 minutes. Sim Giget, Sukadam Nana, Nikki Giget. We take out let him get a canes. We take out let him hide. We take out let him some sien. Ask the amscaboot, I'm dark oi. Dim some alliru at a ramsi wam go dark wassum. Why, dim will ramsi wam go. Honored people, the great Klingit nation, Haida nation, my fellow Tsimsian, and to the Ak Kwan, thank you. I also said that there is not enough time for me to speak completely in Somalia and English to you all, so I'm going to speak English uh, for the rest of my time, for the most part. I don't know what came over a 36-year-old uh, David Boxley when he decided to hand a carving tool to his six-year-old son. Um, nowadays, you know, he might get in trouble for such a thing. But uh, one of my very earliest clear memories is t adding a piece of wood and just hacking the living heck out of it. I am now... Uh, nearing 42 years old and have car carved nearly 30 totem poles. Um, uh, my point is, is how fortunate uh, can anyone be to have been raised in and around the renaissance of Simsian culture I was in diapers when the first totem pole was being carved in Metlakatla, pooping on the shop floor. <laughs> and uh, I, I, it's, it's unbelievable to me the great fortune I've, I've had in my life. Uh, when my dad raised that first totem pole, Nathan Jackson was there to tie the ropes on for it to be pulled up, and he was there when I carved a totem pole for my grandmother's memorial back in 2011. I got to learn from Robert Davidson for two years in his shop. Um, 
just unbelievably lucky. And on top of that, uh, lifelong friendships and, and support from my people. Um, and since I've moved home to Metlakatla, uh, have tried my best to fight for our language and now for my community in new ways. Uh, getting asked to carve a totem pole, just like speaking for all the Simpsian, getting asked to carve a totem pole that represents all the Simpsian is, is uh, a daunting task. I want to take some of my time here to uh, give you all a little bit of an education. Very often, I'm going to be a little more blunt than I maybe normally am. Uh, very often, the Simpsian here in Southeast Alaska, because of our unique history, because of our smaller population, can tend to feel on the fringes or felt, feel like an afterthought. And uh, I think about our history all the way back, you know, 1887 was a tumultuous time for my people and the founding of Metlakatla, Alaska, but our history goes back to the beginning of time. When my people left Temlacham after the flood, migrated down the Skeena River, establishing villages and tribes that still exist to this day. That migration didn't stop at Lachwalams or even at Machlachatla. My community moved in one more migration to Annette Island. The history on this totem pole uh, was difficult to show because when Simpsian say the word clan, we get into some semantics here, but I want everybody to understand this. Clan for us are our freyatries, which are equal to the Haidas and the Clinkets moieties. Haidas and Clinkets have eagle and raven. Simpsian have eagle, raven, wolf, and killer whale separate from each other, but equal. This is crucial to understand and important, so when sometimes we hear things like, oh, the eagle's over there and the raven's over there, you know, that leaves us out. And uh, I also want to express today the honor it is for these crests that have, we've carried with us all this way, from the Skeena River all the way to Southeast Alaska, um, that they stand today on the land of the Akwan is an honor and a privilege and something that we don't take lightly. The Akwan are uh, challenged to have a state capital on their territory. And I want them to know that we recognize that challenge and we are grateful that we are allowed to express the modern presence of our people uh, on their territory. So I want to talk about the totem pole. We're lucky enough that it's right here to point at Elfie. Yes, thank you. The goal. In order to put all four Freya trees on one totem pole, I decided that I would put them on the pole chronologically based on their origin. At the top of the pole is a killer whale and grizzly bear, which are the main crests of the Gispudwada. They came first. Then the Ranhada, represented by a raven and frog. For many years in our ancient history, we had a moiety system, and it was the Gispudwada and the Ranhada that were the main clans of the Simsian. Then after migration came the Lachskiik, represented on this totem pole by a beaver and in its tail an eagle. Then finally, the Lachkibu, my clan, which originates at a place called Wi Lachyip between the Nass and Stikin River. It is uh, 
so crucial to me that all of this is relayed and that there are Somali place names all the way out on the west coast of POW, Lakhaxpa is Forrester Island. Willukst Amadiak is Cape Shacken. Hachstacht is Cape Fox on the mainland side. We have been around quite a while. The name Sheikhs that's found in Wrangell is of Simsian origin. And my people have traded and intermarried and lived amongst the Gidekaniyats, that's how we say Tlingit people, and the Haida for millennia. So us being here and represented amongst you is hoyach, it's right. Um, I want to go through some thanks. Um, this is the first totem pole since I was 20 years old that I hired my father to come work on it with me. Uh, he's more expensive now than he was then. Uh, he came up for nearly two weeks and, and really um, it was a wonderful, humbling reminder of just how good my dad is. Um, my Uncle Floyd Guthrie came up and worked for a bit. Where's Uncle Floyd? You can come up here. Um, had some painting help. Uh, uh, Cortland Byman, who works for uh, the Net Island School District, would stay after work and help us paint. And um, a young student named uh, Elizabeth Anderson, Anderson, Anderson um, who is one of John Hudson's students. John Hudson teaches native art at our school, uh, just like his father did for many, many years. And uh, this young lady came up and asked us, what can I do? Can I help? Can I help? So I hired her to paint, and she did a great job for us. Um, I want to thank uh, Chris Booth and his dad, Steve. Chris has came all the way up with his wife, Darcy. I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, Chris and his dad uh, roughed out the the log for us, flat in the back, helped hollow it, and Chris did some carving on the pole. Uh, Chris, you should come up here too. Oh, he's saying no. Well, he should though. Um, really appreciate you. And uh, Chris, he also let us use his uh, net loft as a pole carving shed for a little while until it got too cold and we moved up to the Net Island School District. Uh, his wife, Darcy, is actually on the school board. Thank you, Darcy. Please pass that along to Todd Lindsay, our superintendent, how much we appreciate. Uh, providing us with that space. Uh, I'd like to thank Kevin Hudson who helped us uh, move the pole one day. Um, it's uh, so the last the last person that I'm going to talk about is the most important one for me on this project. Which uh, you know, I'll echo the whole idea that master artist when I'm sitting here in front of my teachers is a totally uncomfortable thing to be called. Um, I, st like I said, I still had to call, you know, dad, what do I do about this? I, I, you know, at nearly 30 totem poles in, I'm still learning. And that, that is, uh, if you're that far in and you're not still learning, you're not doing it right. That's that. Um, but the apprentice, that's the position that he was put in on this poll, uh, is really just my friend, Clifton Guthrie. Holtkach Shaw is his name. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I was most excited about, about being here, is just to be amongst all these other carvers. We don't all get to see each other very much. We all know each other and respect each other. But one of the most exciting things for me was to get my pal to do this poll with me and then show up today so I could say to all these other carvers, look out, you guys. He was a great carver before he worked on this project. And uh, he is, uh, in my opinion, going to be one of the good ones, you know, one of the greats. And uh, it's such an honor to carve with somebody that I can call my friend, who's a good man. Um, so I... I I'm really, really excited for, for, 
you know, the other carvers got to talk about the future of their people. Well, the future of Simpson totem pole carving is in really good hands. And I, and I am very, very grateful to you, my friend. Really, really grateful. Okay, I'm going to finish up. Um, oh, there's a couple of things I want to uh, finish with, and they're actually represented on the totem pole. One is the, the blue paint that you see on the beaver uh, and eagle faces. That We got that from, there's some old masks that uh, we use that paint after contact. We, you know, we got new colors of paint and used them. And it became uh, something that my dad really liked and is put on lots of his artwork and I put it on mine. So that, that color, just so everyone here knows today, whether it's known forever or not, that's the tribute to my father, that, that paint on there, because he's, he's Luxkeek. If you look up close here or, or at the pole, there's dashing on the bear's arms at the top of the pole. That's something that was found on pieces in what, what we might call that, you know, that dark time in between the classical period and, and modern times. And there were some carvers that, that carried what they could on in a time where we weren't allowed to potlatch and we weren't allowed to make things for us, but we could make them for sale. And one of those men uh, is Nice Lute, Sidney Campbell, who happens to be Clifton's great, great uncle. He comes from a strong line. Not only that, he is Luxkeek and the nephew of David Boxley and will one day carry one of David's names. Um, what, again, how lucky am I? The last name I want to talk about today ties back to my, my need, my, the need I feel to educate and take our place amongst you all is after his business was burnt down, down on Gravina Island, where the airport is now in Ketchikan. Peter Simpson moved to Juneau. I'm sure the white men that burnt his sawmill down regret that move because he came to Juneau and got involved in politics. And he said one day to a, a really important, well, who would become a very really important man amongst the Tlingit people, Willie, whose land is this? It's ours. Then fight for it. Peter Simpson uh, is somebody that I, I really hold dear in that his history amongst you all validates us being here today, the rest of, these, of us as Simpson people. That, uh, that the Alaska Native Brotherhood and Clink and Haida owes something to Peter Simpson and, if I may be so bold, the Simpson people. So we are grateful, if I may be so bold to speak for us, we are grateful to be amongst you, to be a part of this project. My thanks to the Alaska Heritage Institute. I don't know how long I took, but at this point of the day, I'm wet and I don't care. <laughs> um, my friends who have come all this way, Gary, Katie, I mean, if I start, start naming people, I'm going to be in trouble. There's a one last thing that has to happen. All these carvers will know what it is the second I do it. But as a, as a Northwest Coast art nerd, I need this to happen right now. Okay, And the guys I'm about to ask to do this are going to not be pleased with me for doing it. Ugh. But they love me, so I'm going to take a chance. Could I have David Boxley, Nathan Jackson, and Robert Davidson come stand up here for a second, please? The life I've lived, the life that us carvers get to live, are due in no small part, especially for the Slinget, Haida, and Simsian, to these three men. And on a day where 12 totem poles are raised to represent our people, they deserve so much thanks and gratitude. 
I, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, get, let's hear it for him. I'm sorry, guys, but thank you. <laughs> I'm not sorry, really. This is the coolest thing ever. Okay. Oh, uh, to all of the Simsian and anybody who want to come, um, after all of the, everything is done here, uh, we're going to do a little carver's dance and stuff over by the Simsian totem pole. You are welcome to attend. And uh, thank you very, very much. Oh! Toyach Sut Nusum. That's thank you to many people. We're complicated. We got four clans. We're complicated because you got to change thank you depending on how many people you're talking to. That's, that's being a Simpson. Thank you very much. And to the Simpson people, I want to tell you how much we appreciate you. We know that you were in Alaska far longer than the period that you came with Father Duncan. We are richer for the songs that you gave to us, a song that we still use today as a clinket song, as an entry song. We thank you for those songs. We thank you for the art that you brought. We know that some of the greatest art that we have here in our country, in Klukwan and in Wrangell, we know that that came from the Simpsian people. We know that you came among our people to Wrangell, where you fished and harvested herring eggs with our people. We are one people. We know from our DNA studies that we descended from the same population. We may speak different languages. Our cultures may be somewhat different, but we know that we are one with the Simpsian people. So we want you to know that we Clinket people pray, give you homage for all the things that you have bequeathed to us, for making the Clinket culture richer. We thank you for that. We do not ignore that. We recognize that. And I want to tell you, I promise you that you'll have another poll. Maybe four. I know David wants four. <laughs> and we will do our very best to give you your four fratries, your four clans. We will do our very best for that. We also want to thank you for still being the greatest in our art. You are the ones teaching us. When your children come to our children's jury dart shows, doggone at the Simpson win all of the prizes. So we thank you for that, for keeping our art alive and vibrant and the best of Northwest Coast arts culture. We recognize that the Simpsons give that to us. And so we thank you for that. And we are glad that we are celebrating here together as one people. Gnachish. I have one more announcement to make. Uh, I don't know if Lee Wallace is here. Lee? Lee Wallace? He's a trustee. Oh, Lee. OK. I know you guys don't like to be called master artists, but I'm sorry. We're going to call you master artists anyway. We think you are master artists, and we know that you are teaching our children. And I want to tell you and give you an announcement 
that we are carving one more pole right now, and we're just waiting until that log gets to Saxman. Lee Wallace will be doing that pole. Lee, thank you. I haven't told you the clan yet. <laughs> but I promise you that we are, we are doing our very, very best to raise the money for 17, oh, oh no, 17. I have to make it 20 now. I promised the Simpson <laughs> four poles. So anyway, thank you, Lee. We're, we're looking forward to him carving the next totem pole, and we're just hopeful that in the next month or so, we're going to get in the announcement about funds to carve the rest of the poles. So thank you, totem pole carvers. Thank you, clans, for letting us use your crest and tell our story so that our children are going to know their stories, they're going to know their history, and that the people who are coming to our shores are going to know that this is the homeland of the Clinket, the Haidas, and the Simpson. We also have a dedication for masks that have been put up in Heritage Square. The first one is an Inupiat mask, Inupiat. So we'd like to ask Cordelia Kelly to come forward. And if the artist is here, uh, Larry Avancana. Cheesh, I apologize if I said that wrong. that many, many people come to our shores. And very often they don't know, when they come here to Southeast Alaska, they think that we're, it's only Clinkett, Hyde, and Simpson. But we want them to know that Alaska is rich in cultural diversity. And we are so proud that we have Inupiat people. We have Yupik, Alutik, Unangan, Athabascan, and our Southeast people. So we, we've called this Faces of Alaska. We want the public to be introduced to all of the indigenous groups um, that live here in Alaska. And we're calling it Faces of Alaska, Gateway to the Rest of Alaska. Cordelia. Mm -hmm. Ublu Lotak. Ublu Lotak Ilukhafsi. My name is Kherenyak Alurik Miurunga. My name is Kherenyak from Wainwright. I come from the people of the native village of Wainwright called Alurik, Alurik Miurunga. Um, thank you for the invitation to come here today to Akwan and the honor, the very great honor to introduce. Um, very esteemed artist and cultural leader, Larry Lawrence Avakana. His Inupak Sini, his Inupak names are Ulak and Suwit Taruk. Um, Wainwright is a community that is on the Alaska's North Slope, and it's about 90 miles southwest of Utkalavik, which is where Larry is from. So it's a great honor to be able to introduce our neighbor, um, someone from whom our community has very close connections to, and um, relations and ties. Um, Inupiaq artist Larry Avakana, he grew up in Utkalavik, and he was surrounded by our culture and our history and really grew up in that subsistence lifestyle that informs his work that he does today. His mother, um, he really grew up in creation. His mother was a skilled seamstress and skin sewer. Um, his father was a great whaler and he himself harpooned his own Alevik, his own whale, on his father's crew. So he grew up in that traditional lifestyle where you see his own lived experiences and that of Inupiaq people represented in his work. As a practicing artist for more than 50 years, he is inspired by the stories of our people, of Inupiaq, from an everyday lifestyle of subsistence, ceremonies, and natural cycles of our Arctic living. He received his Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Rhode Island School of Design and Associate of Arts from the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, where he later learned, uh, returned to teach sculpture 
and glass blowing. And he also taught glass blowing in Utkalvik, his home community, like 1973, 1974 as well. He served as the head of the sculpture studio at the Visual Arts Center in Anchorage, and he works with a number of different mediums. If you look up his name, you see a variety of different mediums that he really ex um, has incredible talent with stone, wood, bronze, glass, and other media. And his work really is just everywhere. Like you go to our own community of Utkalavik and you see his work in the schools, the local schools there but it's also displayed in states across the nation and in museums and collections across the world, such as the Musée de Boulogne in France, the Burke Museum in Seattle, and the Alaska State Museum in Juneau, he, here in Juneau. He currently lives in Homer. So it's a really great pleasure to be able to introduce uh, Larry Avocano. There you go. I am Ulak uh, Larry Lawrence Avakana. Uh, my mother is Agutai uh, Jack Lucy, and she was raised at Prudhoe Bay on the uh, right near and my and my name Ulak is uh, from. Uh, uncle who was uh, right off of Prudhoe Bay. He had a house there. And uh, the oil company said, oh, nobody lived there for hundreds of years. And my uncle, who was living there during the 20s and 30s and passed on, but uh, they used to uh, take grass and uh, rub it in the oil and use it for, uh, for starting fires in the past when we were, when my, my uh, grandfather, Avakan, that's where we got our last name from, is our, my grandfather, Avakan. And so it's Avakana. And um, I, um, my mother was born in, in Point Hope, Tikigak. And my mask, part of it is from Tigayak. Uh, and uh, the left side is a uh, whaling ceremonial mask form. And the other side is the, uh, the ancestor, or the shade they call, uh, the reflection of our ancestors that are within the mask. And so that's what, uh, what the inspiration was for this mask. My father, his name was Tukutak, uh, which means uh, killer. And he was a great whaler with his, with his father, uh, Avakan, who first uh, started the family in whaling back in uh, the 20s, I believe, in the teens. And so uh, he was born in uh, 1919, my father. He was in the uh, army during the war on the Aleutian chains. And also uh, he uh, decided to go into the National Guards and he retired as a uh, colonel in the National Guards. And he also worked for the North Slow Borough uh, as a um, um, executive director of the North Slope Borough when they first started to develop a government system up in the, the Arctic Slope region. Um, Rosita came to me and gave me a call and asked me, uh, would you do uh, me a favor and, and uh, make something for me for for the uh, for these new buildings, and I said sure. I'll always, you know, said a yes to Rosita. <laughs> she was a friend for many 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 years, and I've known her when I was just a young man. And uh, so that's uh, and 
I live in uh, Homer now, Homer, Alaska. I used to live in uh, Suquamish, Washington. I have two children who are half Suquamish, Salish, and um, my daughter Nayuk and my son Avayak are still living in the Suquamish area. And also my daughter works for the Suquamish tribe as a uh, coordinator for the uh, youth program. And so uh, we are continuing, and she's also an artist. And uh, so we are still continuing with my family, uh, our traditions, our, our dual tr traditions. And also my grandfather my, on my uh, mother's side, who is uh, Captain Peterson. He was a, uh, a commercial whaler and, and also a, uh, he uh, supplied a lot of the um, um, material for the, uh, the little um, sites uh, where they could, uh, the native people can get material and hunting implements. Uh, and so he supplied all the, uh, all the, goods for those for those places and my uh, Inupiaq grandfather he uh, asked Captain Peterson to have a child because he couldn't have any children so my mother is half Norwegian and uh, from Sandy Fjord my grandfather's from there and he uh, is in a in many books about uh, the traditions of uh, commercial whaling. And he was one of the last ones to whale uh, commercially. And so uh, my wife and I, Donna, uh, her, she's right over there. Her and I uh, are uh, just built our new home and I'm trying to build a studio. So the help of uh, many buyers of my work, I think I can build a studio for myself again. And so uh, right now I'm working on two projects uh, for uh, the Arctic, uh, North Slope Borough and Arctic Slope Regional Corporation uh, to do uh, two bronzes, uh, uh, life-size bronzes of two leaders that passed on, Jake Adams and Oliver Levitt. So, uh, might be able to see those in the future. Uh, I want to thank you and thank uh, the uh, people here for letting me speak and, and be a part of this beautiful place. Uh, there are more masks that are coming, just like there are more totem poles that are coming. Uh, the next one that we'll talk about is the Alutic mask, uh, with an introduction by Gary Stevens and then the artist Perry Eaton. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, a pleasure to uh, have been a part of all of this uh, wonderful ceremony today, and, and congratulations for all you have done. It is just exciting to, to see what's going on, and it's also a pleasure for me to be able to introduce a, a longtime friend, uh, Perry Eaton, who is a fantastic mask maker. Um, I, I saw his first mask, uh, the first mask I saw of his was at his father's memorial service, and it was a just gorgeous, beautiful mask. There was a roaring fire going, and all of a sudden, Perry uh, took that mask and put it in the midst of that fire and, and it went up in flames. And that was a, a great ceremony, but also, I thought, the loss of a wonderful mask. But it was an, an appreciation of his father and all of his accomplishments. So, as I said, a tremendous pleasure to introduce Perry. He grew up in Kodiak, and because I'm from Kodiak, I was asked to come down here and, and, uh, and present him to you. He started painting when he was uh, around the age of eight, went on to study art and business, 
After graduation, Perry worked in the, in the banking industry. He was a banker in economic development. I, I'm glad that he finished that career and <laughs> retired and then really spent more of his time um, in his art. And, and so such a great thing that he has been able to do that. He served as a board member for numerous cultural educational organizations in Alaska, including uh, as a founding president and CEO of the Alaska Native Heritage Center in Anchorage, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Throughout his career, uh, Perry continues to make art, specializing in black and white photography and carving traditionally based Sukpiak Alutic masks. So please join me in welcoming an Alutic master artist, Perry Eden. After an introduction like that, I should just sit down. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator. Wow, I can't express how much gratitude I feel towards the indigenous people of Southeast Alaska. You are leaders in cultural activities. You inspire all other groups through Alaska. You set the standard and you have influenced me You've influenced the Aleutic people of Kodiak Island, and you continue to be that leader. And for that, I am ever grateful. Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 Rosita, no, that's not it. Come on. I want to tell you a little bit about the mask, um, or the sculpture of the mask. This is a very traditional mask of a bird, and the bird spirit among the Aleutic people is a messenger, and it is a messenger between the worlds, of which we have five. The good news is, they're all up. Our belief is that the bird, because it travels everywhere, it travels underwater, travels into the ground, travels out of sight, it takes long journeys. The bird is the messenger between the worlds. The ancestors live in those other worlds, and the ancestors are the most important influence in our life. And we need to communicate. We need to have a mechanism. And the bird is our spirit. And a mask is a tool for transformation. So you can take that mask and you can become that messenger. So it's very, very important to us. And the bird is our messenger. We have other symbolic masks, but I thought the bird being a messenger between the people of Southeast and the Aleutic people of Kodiak Island was the most appropriate presentation. And so it's a gift from the Aleutic people to the indigenous people of Southeast. The senator introduced me by talking about the mask that I burned, which probably deserves a little bit of comment because it wasn't burned. It wasn't burned. In the Anglican tradition, a fire is a method of destruction. And so they think of that as destruction. No, it's a method of transformation. And if you're going to take an object and you're going to transfer it between the worlds, what better way than to change the structure and send it? And we use fire for that purpose. And that mask held the spirit of my father and it held the spirit of the people. And they came together during that ceremony and then they were released and transformed in fire. Fire is the tool. It's not destruction. We honored a gentleman, uh, Alphonse Pinart, who came to Alaska in, uh, in the 1880s, 1870s. He collected much of our material, and we honored him with a ceremony in France with a mask we made, and we danced, and we transformed. Try and convince the French people that the destruction of art is normal. <laughs> it, it was a tough go. 
So I sat down with them and they absolutely said we could not do that. They said, we'll take the mask, we'll put it away, 50 years, no one will ever see it, it'll be fine, don't worry about it. I said, no, 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 it has to be part of the ceremony. No, we argued, whole big group of their people. Finally, I said to them, I said, okay, how many here have been to a funeral? Everybody kind of raised their hands. I said, what'd they do with the box? They didn't destroy the box. That thing cost a lot of money. My goodness. I said, that's what it was made for. And that's what that mask is made for. That is the spirit. That is the recognition. That's us. That's you. Thank you. I want to thank Perry, but I also want to thank and acknowledge the Alutic people who came, who came down, unfortunately, not on their own, but were brought by the military. And many of them stayed here and became one with us. And so, you know, today we recognize, uh, we say Klinkit Haida and Sumtian, but we should all say Alutic because many of our people are also Alutic and have blessed us with beautiful, beautiful people, and we just want to recognize that we have that connection as well. And we do not forget your people that went out to Funter Bay, and we want to do something to recognize those people that were forced uh, to stay out there at Funter Bay. We promise you that, that we'll have some sort of recognition, a permanent recognition uh, of, that, of that time period. But thank you, thank you so much. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good as cheese. We also will have a Dene, an Athabascan mask coming. And now we'll ask Carrie Groven uh, to step forward and John Hudson. Good as cheese. So I have the honor of introducing John Hudson III. He's Simshian from Metlakatla. Uh, he is on the Sea Alaska Heritage Native Artists Committee. And I want to mention, because Rosita mentioned this earlier, the first time I learned about John Hudson was when he uh, submitted artwork from his students on the Annette Island School District. And his students took basically all of the awards with a, a couple of exceptions in the, uh, our very first youth art exhibit in 2016. That was pretty cool. His mask is not here today. It's being finalized uh, in the foundry and it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. It is called Catcher of Souls, and it represents the Tlingit, Haida, and Simshian peoples. As a child, John Hudson III had the opportunity to watch his father, Jack Hudson, and a group of his peers engage in a renaissance within the medium of northern, northwest coast native art. This served as an inspiration and for over 30 years, Hudson has immersed himself in all forms of traditional art. Hudson specializes in Northwest Coast formline and sculpture and handcrafts his own traditional tools. Over the past several years, Hudson has worked with the Smithsonian through several residencies and teaching engagements. In addition, he is a full-time Northwest Coast native art teacher with the Annette Island School District, where he passes on his love and knowledge of the art to middle and high school students. Hudson and his students have been recognized and awarded many honors over the years, including several prizes at the Sea Alaska Heritage Youth Art Exhibits and Jewelry Art Shows. He's also a recipient of the 2019 Governor's Art Awards 
for the per per perpetuation of Alaska Native arts. His work is featured in several museums and is sold in galleries around the world. And I would like them to say, Kunalchish Hawa Toyashut Nusum. And John Hudson, please come over. In Doegshin Newsom. Um, before I start, um, in Metlakatla, we are one big family. And today, early this morning, we did experience um, a loss. And as one big family in Metlakatla, I need everybody back home to know that my hearts and thoughts are with everybody. Um, and, and all of us that are from Metlakatla here, our, our thoughts are, are with everybody back home. Um, I'm here with great humility, and I feel absolutely honored to have been asked uh, to create one of the faces of Alaska masks. And the first thing I would like to do is give thanks, give thanks to the Alaska Heritage Institute, um, give thanks to Dr. Rosita Whirl uh, for being such a visionary to make things like this happen. Um, it's, it's incredible to be part of. Um, I'd like to thank my father, Jack Hudson, um, who wasn't with us anymore, for teaching me what he taught me. And I'd like to thank my son, Eric Hudson, um, who is also not with me anymore, for the two of them were also with me when I carved this mask. Um, I need to thank my wife, Shannon. I could not walk the planet without her. She's my heart and soul. Uh, I kind of threw what I was going to say out the door, but um, I don't like to talk about myself. I want to talk a little bit about a mass that I carved. Um, realizing that it was going to be representing Simshian, Clinkett, and Haida, uh, it, it weighed a little bit on my mind, and I thought, what should I do? And what should it represent? And I thought that we needed to have a shaman here. And so I carved a mask that represents a traditional Northwest Coast shaman. I did name it Catcher of Souls. One of the many jobs that a shaman would do is if an ailing person uh, needed healing, a shaman would try to recapture their soul and give it back to that person. And part of what's going on here is a recapturing of our souls and we're gaining it back. And I thought something that represented that would be appropriate um, to place on the grounds here. And I'm, I'm deeply honored. Um, there's a couple quotes I wanna, I wanna share. They're, they're favorite quotes of mine. The first one is from Bill Reed, and I hope I get it right because I didn't, I didn't write it down. But he said, when we look at a piece of Northwest Coast art, we're looking at its afterlife. Its real life is the movement by which it got to be that shape. And every artist understands the life of a piece of art and the movement by which it got to be that shape. These things that we're seeing around, they lived a life before they came here. They lived a life with the creator of them, with the artist, and now they'll have a separate life. And um, I also wanna leave you with one one quote that I think is uh, appropriate from Emily Carr. She said, art being so much greater than ourselves, it will not give up once it has taken hold. And it's taken hold. And Doegshim Newsom. Doegshim. Uh, the last mask will be from my father's people. I'd like to invite Kachung and Drew Michael up. We are not. 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 
Kasatun Drew Michael, Mamtre Sagamiunk, Anchor Cham Nutan Witaktuk, Eager River King on Skuk Su, Leedshak, Bob Shamun, Inupak, Master Ak Joe Sanankatak, Carla, Carlene Carluxo, Early Amat Karyak. This man here, I am so proud of him. This is not the first time I've been a part of a ceremony uh, with Drew. Many years ago, he created this art installation called Aggravated Organisms. And it was a beautiful piece. And it toured all around everywhere. And it really spoke to many of the afflictions that happened to our people, the afflictions that really destroyed so many lives. And he really captured that in these very significant masks, much like the one that is here today. I had a chance to dance that mask, one of the masks, before it was sent on before it was transformed. And it was one of the most powerful moments that I've ever experienced, actually, in, in, in ceremony. It was the one, the mask that I danced, that we danced in our group, was the mask of the affliction of alcohol. And when we threw it into the fire, Drew was speaking about it. All of them were there burning, but that one alcohol, it exploded. And it was this powerful, this explosion of sparks amongst all of us. I'm proud of this man for many, many reasons. So proud that in our group in Thomioa, we have commissioned many of Drew's masks and proudly danced them in almost every single performance that we have done. And so, I am so honored to be able to share uh, and introduce this man here. And I'm so excited and happy that me, this Yupik man who now lives on Slinket Ani, on Akwan, can have a piece of my home and of my people when I see this mask and see and have this pride. And I'm so honored that you all have done this. And without any further ado, Drew Michael. Kuyana. Hello, everybody. Drew Michael. Um, let's see. Yes, I'm Yupik Anupiak and Polish. My legal name is Andrew Lawrence Michael. <laughs> I was, uh, yes, born in Bethel, raised in Eagle River, and I took up mass carving in 1997 with the help of my father he, and my mother. They pushed me to do something creative, so I took a carving class at, with Joe Sanungatuk at UAA. When I was 15, so my dad had to be there with me. I was too young to do that alone. And I have worked with so many different artists that I, master artists like Perry and Larry <laughs> <laughs> and Kathleen Carlo, Joe Sanungatuk. Um, 
Absolutely. There's so many people who I've worked with and looked at over the years, their work, and it's helped me understand what I do. And when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I had to come to a point where I, I figured out that I needed to tell my story. I didn't want to recreate what I saw in museums because I did that a couple times in the beginning, but as I, I started to do uh, work more and more, making masks, I realized the power of telling story is your own story and the stories of the things that are in your life. Uh, and when I made this mask back there, you can see uh, with the feathers, uh, I was thinking about, well, <laughs> the only parameter that was on this, <laughs> This whole project was just make it Yupik. <laughs> I was like, what does Yupik mean? <laughs> because Yupik masks are so many different styles. There are so many styles of masks that talk about the spirits of the animals, or the spirits of the weather, or the spirits of the land, um, healing spirits. There are so many different ways to tell a story of transformation. And this mask, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about uh, what is Yupik? Is Yupik just a people? Is it just a language? Is it, what is it? It's the way we live our lives and it's connected to place. And the things that we value in our cultures and in our lives, we can share those through time and to, through all the generations. Those are the th only things that we can carry with us is how we live our life. And that is in us. And this piece, I wanted to share how Yupik people see everything having spirit. And it starts with the land, the peace inside of you, the, the, your being wholeness, the wholeness of who you are and then reaching out into the world. You're not stuck in yourself. Reaching out into the world and, and connecting to the spirits that are around. And so when you look at that mask, it's like you're looking over the horizon of the land of the West, <laughs> the, the Yupik country. So um, I, I really enjoyed this project. I did have to walk around it for like a whole month until I figured out what it was going to be. I kept asking the mask, who are you? <laughs> and it finally shared who it wanted to be. Um, it was a very fun and large project. I've never made anything that large before. Um, so I thank you, everybody here, for being able to allow all of us to, to share our art and our culture, uh, the things that we carry about, care about in our lives. Thank you so much for having all of us, and this is such an honor, and I'm very humbled standing here listening and looking at all the art and all the people. I'm so blessed. I, am, I lived in Portland for many years and I felt so separated from the land and the people. And coming back, I feel so full of life. And it's because of all of you, the things that we're doing right now. We are growing, we are moving forward. We are lifting up the broken pieces and making us, we're making each other whole again. And I thank you, I thank you so much. So. I don't, have, I don't have a name for it. I'll come up with a name sometime. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Two things left. I'd like to invite all the artists to come forward and their apprentices. And if our mask artists would, if you want to dance, you certainly can. We need to dance to uh, complete the dedication of these poles. We're so thankful for the work that you have done for overseeing these projects and for putting such wonderful monuments onto our lands that our grandchildren will be able to see. There'll be one more dance after this that everybody could join. So uh, if you're feeling a little chilly, you can warm up.
Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to close on a happy note. We're going to do the Simshian happy song. And we'd like all our friends that want to come up and dance. The song was written by myself and Kimberly Clark. And it just says, come and dance with us. Come and sing with us. So I want to see everybody, if you feel like dancing, join us. Doiks at Newsom. One more song. We're going to head down uh, to the Bill Over Street, uh, also known as the Whale Park, 
to join uh, the Boxleys down there, and everyone's welcome. Gunas Chish, Hawa, Doixat Newsome.